Hello and welcome to Dump Stat, the show that aims to min-max your campaign out of the dump. This week, we're going to try to play a game, Torchbearer, an actual play, and see what we can learn from it. I'm one of your hosts, Matt, the cool one, and I'm joined by... Beard. And we also have a few other people joining us. All right, cool, uh, yeah. <laughs> if if you uh, may have watched our uh, Pathfinder streams before, we are joined by Luke, who is playing Svelta in our other show, if you want to say hi. Or don't. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> we, a, a finely and, uh, oiled for, machine. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who are... He, he's, he's got YouTube fright. We're, we're also joined by uh, uh, somebody who you might be familiar with in the chat, Nye. Hi who we've had on the show before. So yeah, so very much like our uh, Star Jammer show, um, we're sort of gonna be experimenting here just to sort of explain a little bit. Uh, we are going to um, <laughs> be uh, so, sort of like playing uh, this live. Uh, everybody has characters made already and I've told them basically as little as possible. So Torchbearer, as I talked about last week, is a uh, setting created by the Burning Wheel Company. It says uh, Thor, Alverstud, and Luke Crane, I guess, are like the, the primary creators of this. Uh, yeah, the, the concept people. Um, I've told them very little of the actual mechanics for a couple of reasons, and I think it's sort of important. So one, uh, I think it'll be better listening if I sort of explain the mechanics as we go through to the viewers, like as stuff comes up. Two, I think that uh, because Torchbearer is trying to ape uh, traditional Dungeons and Dragons, where the heroes are pretty incompetent, as this very amazing artwork shows uh, from from the book. Oh, I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I'll definitely and, sh I'll definitely show it right here. Yeah, it's, you can't it's, do that. Uh, and finally, um, I think that it'll work because it'll sort of spur you guys to creativity and have you sort of try more stuff because you're not entirely sure how a lot of this stuff works. So our characters have been made already. Uh, I don't think we need to get into introductions right now, um, but unless we need to like fix any emergency audio or anything right now, I think we're good to go. I would just like to point out that I was muted. Okay. So well, that's that, sorry. So for you, for those of you playing at home, that, that's, oh, that's Luke. Um. Okay. Cool. Uh. So, uh, and I'm gonna try to make this intro uh, as less cringy as possible. So, <clears throat> um. Uh. Should we tell the viewers there, just who we're playing, or uh, I mean, just um. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, so, um, there is power in names. Uh, one name, Sanctuary, is uh, apparently, a as it uh, announces to be, a bastion for those who survived the cataclysm to the outside world. Um, it has been centuries since anyone has been able to venture out safely. Uh, at one point, as ruins attest uh, outside of the Shimmer Sky, um, the cities of civilized man and dwarf and elf and halfling once sprawled uh, across the continent. But uh, now that's these testaments are just that, uh, monuments to a failed attempt at civilization. Um, However, this cataclysm occurred uh, is sort of uh, both muddied by rumors and by the uh, the uh, church's teachings. Um, whether it was brought about by the sins of man, uh, a, a magical catastrophe, or simply a natural disaster gone awry, uh, civilization has been lost, save for this last sanctuary. Uh, the metropolis of Sanctuary itself. Um, this city is massive. It is far beyond a metropolis, as people have been sort of living constrained in here for some time. Um, the districts have taken on lives of their own, as parts of metropolis uh, are ancient ruins that are now completely clustered with farmlands. 
um, closer to the pit uh, are large cathedrals and chapels where they can uh, stand under the watchful gaze of the unseen. Uh, still others are complete uh, uh, bastions of sort of trade and uh, those who are brave enough to venture out of the shimmer sky to bring riches and relics back from the outside. Uh, but just as a name uh, can serve as an indicator for what something is, it, it can also serve as a guise, a, a shield to hide the ugly truth. And sanctuaries is that it it is a lie. Sanctuary as it exists now is ruled over by tyrannical deacons, um, the ultimate rule of law in sanctuary. Uh, the deacons are served by many, but they are the ultimate authority on who stays and who goes. Uh, the deacons serve the unseen in the Tower of Heaven, a massive tower that reaches into the pit, a massive kilometer wide and deep pit in the center of uh, sanctuary and that a tower raises out of and heads far far into the sky and seems to be creating the shimmer sky uh the shimmer sky is for lack of a better word a massive bubble that surrounds the city uh the bubble again is is very massive it encapsulates encapsulates the entire city um through through its diameter and very much as as it impends uh, the Shimmer Sky is sort of a vibrant, uh, ho however, somewhat muted, uh, uh, twisting colors. Um, if none of you have traveled outside of the Shimmer Sky, but more so for you as players, if you can imagine sort of like sunset when the clouds go pink and purple and red and orange, uh, it's sort of a massive swirling that. Uh, during the evening, the Shimmer Sky does take on darker more violet hues but none of you have ever seen the moon sun or stars ever in your lives um the city is also uh ruled over by gangs uh where the deacons reach uh falters gangs rule the better majority of sanctuary uh it is a pretty grimy terrible life and many people don't last very long believe it or not the three of you have it even worse um, it's not really everyone hard has to believe that. <laughs> uh, he's just so excited to use his character voice. I'm sorry, um, I didn't know it I'm, was not my turn to speak. I'm, I'm almost done. <laughs> uh, so, so, you've all heard of sinners. Uh, you've probably even seen some in your lives. And the curse of sin is not as easy to hide as perhaps it was before the cataclysm. Uh, it started as just aches and pains in the body, probably something that you're used to. Uh, but gradually, it grew. Uh, many people, when they get ill, do not seek treatment for this exact reason, lest people find out that they are a sinner, uh, some sort of crime that they committed that is inflicted upon them by the unseen. However, eventually, you're, you started to have almost varicose veins appear on parts of your body. Uh, you would... Uh, vomit, blood, uh, your, your body was racked in pain, and clearly the unseen um, had turned their backs on you. Uh, eventually, you were found out. Uh, you can't hide it forever, and, and the pain is just unbearable. Uh, but when you are a sinner, there is only one way to expunge your sins, and that is being sent below to seek uh, repentance. Um, the deacons eventually captured each of you respectively and brought you to one of the sanctums. And in the bowels of the earth, you were kept for some time. Uh, e each of you probably went through periods of denial, believing that perhaps they didn't send you down below, that sinners were just inflicted with some sort of terrible disease and left to rot and die in the bowels of this prison. But eventually they came for you. Not only that, but one of the high priests came for you and blessed you and told you that very much like the unseen in the tower of heaven uh you too would travel below you would be freed of your sins and you would be liberated from this terrible curse and and perhaps even find your way to heaven um you were given equipment as sending sacrifices down below totally naked would seem pointless to them um as 
probably the more pragmatic of you believe that it is your purpose simply to kill monsters down below to stop them from uh, getting inside the shimmer sky and wreaking havoc in sanctuary. Uh, you were brought deep, deep below the earth uh, where you all met. You didn't really have time to introduce yourselves or get acquainted, however, as these heavily armed deacons uh, led you to an iron uh, wrought gate very deep in the earth. It's very cold down here. Uh, and oddly, uh, although each of you is, is inflicted with this rather terrible curse, it almost feels alleviated the further down you go. Uh, however, sort of unceremoniously, uh, the deacons sort of force you all forward, uh, and you head into a small chamber. Uh, the priest says a sort of final prayer and unceremoniously pulls a lever on the wall, which drops all three of you into a chute filled with water. Uh, you fall for some distance before splashing into a darkened chamber below. Um, getting your wits about you, you manage on lighting a torch or something. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but you notice that um, apparently you've already been cured. Uh, and as you sort of get your bearings and, and look around in this sort of darkened chamber, uh, you see a skeleton on the floor and up above it, a bloody signpost welcomes you. Uh, the, the sign sort of written on the wall in blood says, welcome to the man maker. Here's where we'll start. So you guys can RP for a little bit and then we'll sort of get into the meat of the game. This is unacceptable i am a holy man of the cloth oh. and that sign well, just we just need to get out oh, i don't think we can climb back up unfortunately well i mean at least while we're here perhaps we'll find something that has some sort of value perhaps Uh, how long does it look like this skeleton's been dead for? Uh, that's a great question. So you um, you approach and look it over. I mean, it's been picked clean to the bone. Uh, you notice some of it's sort of been like crushed down here, but there, there's no equipment nearby. It actually looks like it's been here for a pretty long time. Well, All right, Iklam's going to spark up a torch. Okay, and here we're going to get into the meat of the game. So Iklam just lit a torch. A torch provides light for... Uh, it provides light for two people and dim for uh, two people. So one of you is going to be standing in dim light rather than uh, light. Who is that? You can sort of decide amongst yourselves. What about the dwarf? He's used to being underground. That well, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Coram. Do you do you say anything to that or? <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's fine. I'm I don't need the light. Good. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I should point out you do need light, uh, which is why I, dwarves do not have dark vision in this game. Um, however, I can still you still pretend I don't need it. Okay. <laughs> sure. It sounds great. Uh, okay. So uh, you light the torch. Um, and a few things. One thing I'm going to point out right now that's a little bit important, a mechanic that I have to explain before we proceed forward. Um, this game uh, sort of uh, requests, I guess, two roles to be filled. One of those is a leader, uh, but we don't, there's no like mechanical things to it. Uh, I'd rather not have a air quotes leader in this game, but uh, there's another one, which is the map maker. Uh, so Bartholomew, you chose cartography as your specialization, right? Yep. So Matt, you're going to have a sort of special goal. Uh, as long as you are within the light uh, and you sort of have your like weapons not equipped, it, it is assumed that you're sort of doing your best to make a map. However, uh, I don't want you to make an actual map. I'm not going to show you what the map is, uh, and, and I'd rather you don't. Well, and actually, the, the rules sort of, they don't prohibit, but they strongly suggest you don't draw an actual map. But what I do want you to do is to keep a record of places that you go. So you're going to write down, like, descriptions, sort of like what the room looks like, sort of how you got there to the best of your ability. Uh, and we'll sort of 
talk about how the cartography skill works later. But for now, um, if you head into any places like of note or importance, I would like you to write it down like on a WordPress or even on pen and paper or something. It's uh, yeah, uh, probably, just to keep a record of places. Yeah, I'll go. probably do it pen and paper if I can find place on my very, very full desk. Uh, but <laughs> okay. Uh, so to begin then, uh, you're standing uh, in about like ankle deep water. There's a passage that stretches ahead of you. Uh, this pool of water, you know, is somewhat deep because it broke your fall down into the man maker, which is this part of the dungeon. Um, there's also a passage that travels on the, the opposite side of the pool. Uh, you know, it is a little bit deeper in the middle, but if, if you swam to the other side, you could proceed that way. Um, even though you wouldn't really know for, for sake of sort of um, easy explanation, there is a passage north and south, respectively. Uh, there's Great. also the, the waterfall back up, but it's, it's about like a 10 foot wet climb back up there. Uh, sorry, 10 foot wet climb up to the cave mouth and then maybe like another like hour of climbing <laughs> through a waterfall. So yeah, you cannot go back up to sanctuary that way. Uh, well, I assume if we want to escape this hellhole, we should probably go back up. Um, uh, it doesn't say in the starting gear list how long would the rope be that I start with. Uh, the rope. Oh no! So, uh, yeah, going up the waterfall looks like it would be mega challenging, but I'm certainly not going to tell you guys you can't do it. Uh, the rope is. Uh, 50 feet. Well, that is a waste of time. I got a rope and a hook if you want to climb. Oh, if you want to try, sure, go ahead. I'm not sure exactly what kind of use you would be down there, except maybe bait. Well, then I'm going to be heading this way. And I'm going to point to the tunnel opening that we're kind of on the side of. Okay, so that would be the northern passage. Okay. Yep, I will okay. follow him. Well, he, he has the light, so. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, why. Just... <sighs> All right, wait for me. Uh, so what is the marching order? Like, what order are you guys walking in? Uh, I mean, it's... Oh, uh, well... Like, quick description of each other. Yeah. Well, th this would be a perfect time to actually, like, introduce All each right. other and sort of say... Cool. So, are. I am Matt. I am playing Bartholomew, the uh, human cleric. And I um, uh, don't know exactly what to say about my character, except... Because, uh, I, again, I don't know if I want you want this to be revealed through play, but... Um, uh, that's... I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, you you can say it in character. Or you can tell the people OC oh, if you want to. It's it's up to you. I think I'll uh, have people discover what my dude's all about. Hey, I'm Luke. I'm playing Iklam. I basically just look like a halfling. I'm not well armed at all, but I got a pretty big Fuck. Pretty full backpack. <laughs> and yeah. I'm uh, yeah, I'm Nai. I'm playing uh, Karim. I'm just a dwarven adventurer, which is basically just a dwarf. A dwarf. <laughs> just, <laughs> just imagine a dwarf, and that's basically me. So, yeah. Right, okay, I'm cool. going to kind of nod over towards Karim and say, you look like you might be best at the front. Well, you're carrying the torch, and you be at the front. Makes a good point. Um... Uh, Iklam like hands the torch over he, like holds it out <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll just take it and go to the front okay and then behind him I think uh, this is uh, I'll go behind him yeah Bartholomew Unless... Bartholomew probably even though it doesn't make any sense because he's not the one in the dim light maybe Bartholomew would go like uh, last behind 
Well, not yeah. I mean, you will be now. If if Corum is carrying the oh. torch, then it'll be him and Iklim. Oh, uh, nice. You'll be okay when you're sort of walking. You'll be in dim light. You can sort of see where you're going, but you won't be able to make a map until you guys like get to a chamber. Okay. Um, uh, sort of rearrange yourselves. Then, like, I hold my piece of paper and I say, perhaps I should be second if we don't want to get lost. Thankfully, there's people like me who have come prepared to uh, make sure we do not get lost. I hear this place is a real labyrinth. Oh, that's fine. Just overlook me. I'll go last. Perfect. And if somebody is hiding in the darkness, perhaps they'll think you're easy prey. Uh, hopefully, maybe you can uh, scream loud to, uh, so we can, you know, try to save you. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let let's move. Okay, uh, so you travel up the northern passageway, which uh, has a few twists and turns. It's sort of a damp, uneven, uh, unmanufactured cavern. Uh, water drips from the ceiling, and you do your best to sort of like keep it from getting in your equipment. Uh, eventually, you notice that the passage seems to be drifting upwards. Uh, albeit not not too too far. Um, after a short walk, you come to a uh, four way passageway. So from where you're standing, there is a passage both uh, left, right, and uh, straight ahead. You can't see too too far, um, but you do notice that sort of the the ground underneath seems uh, a little bit smoother. There there are like stalactites here and there uh, that have sort of um, been been uh i guess growing in this place for some time uh you can hear uh dripping back the way you came uh to your right uh the passageway looks like it opens up quite a bit but sort of um heads into an an abyssal and inky darkness off to your left you can see that the the stone wall actually seems to narrow a little bit and change in quality but you're not entirely sure how unless you go down and investigate um, <clears throat> and straight ahead of you, you can see that this uh, natural cavern seems to continue onwards, heading up. Which way would you like to go? I look at our dwarven friends and I say, well, you're the cavern expert. What, uh, what way should we go? Um, I think I'll just, uh, you said to the left, there's like the, the walls uh, are changing. Yeah, it, it looks like it sort of narrows a little bit, yeah. I don't know, I'm not... Uh, <laughs> there's people who are normal-sized around here. I don't know if I can fit through. Uh, not not that extensively, but okay. it, it doesn't look like it opens I, up. Yeah, I'm still complaining. <laughs> That's fine. Absolutely. The smarter the passage, the less danger there will be. Yeah, I guess there's less chance for a giant creature to attack us. Uh, I guess we'll go left. I don't or, know. What, uh, didn't we say we wanted to go back up? So shouldn't we go straight ahead? Well, we don't know where it leads. Well, it seems to lead up. Oh. Hmm. Sure. I guess in that case, perhaps we should go forward. Is that a vote for forward? Yeah. Perhaps you should make up your mind. Yeah, I'll just shrug and go forward. Okay. I mean, you have the light. <laughs> They're sort of at your mercy. Um, so uh, you begin to head uh, uh, sort of continuing in this direction, um, heading upwards. Uh, this, this twisting cavern sort of changed direction several times. And while walking, uh, you notice that your torch is... Uh, sputtering and looks like it's going to fade. Uh, so uh, I'll sort of explain something here. Uh, light is extremely important in Torchbearer, as you can probably imagine from the title of the fucking game. <laughs> um, and rules are, or, or turns rather, are sort of dictated by light. Um, oh. Light will change. Light will change both on uh, sort of like turns that 
or like uh, checks that you guys make, like things that you try to accomplish. Uh, sometimes, however, like I'm sort of dictating here, you've sort of traveled to two different rooms and your light will fade. A torch, uh, as I'm sort of gonna point out here, uh, only stays lit for two turns. Uh, so you can either light a new one, I just need to know like who's lighting it, um, I think because I'm carrying the torch, I think I'll just uh, light it when, as soon as the other one goes out. Okay, cool. Um, well, I'm glad you got more of those. Damn, if we, if we don't find any more light before we're out, I think we're probably going to be screwed. So let's Well, how, to... do, how many torches do we have? I have four. I have a lantern with oil. Let me... Oh, uh... maybe we should be using the lantern. No, we saved the lantern. It's the most important light. It's... Uh... Well, I just lit this torch, so we should probably just go forward now before this one goes out. Yes. Hey, I have two more. Okay. Uh, so you begin to proceed uh upwards um the tunnel twists and turns several times uh here and there it narrows and, and widens out a little bit but it's always consistently raising upwards um you walk for some time before the passageway begins to open uh this this chamber is still slanted somewhat to uh it, it it's sort of canted so that the far end of the chamber, the opposite side that you guys emerge on, actually still raises upwards. Um, you can see, however, that your sort of stone wall to the right uh, looks like parts of it have sort of been like chiseled away. Uh, and you can see water uh, is uh, coming down in rivulets uh, from the sort of unseen ceiling above, uh, but you can actually see what looks like a sort of natural basin of water uh, to your right. Uh, to your left, you can see that um, the the sort of like natural uh, carved chamber uh, looks like it twists into two different passageways. So you can sort of uh, continue on your way to the opposite side of the wall, which is like a bigger uh, entryway that looks like it keeps going up. Or there's a passageway to your left that looks a little smaller, still big enough for you to all walk through, but smaller and sort of like uh, continues its its ascent. Well, where now? So they both go uh, upwards, right? Mm -hmm. Should uh, you, you mentioned there was a, ba a basin somewhere in this uh, room? That is correct, yeah. Sort of the right wall has water sort of like coming down in it, and it looks like there's sort of been like a natural bowl kind of carving in the wall that water is collecting in, like a natural pool. Cool. Um, I guess I'll take a look. Is so that's uh, so that's, that's just a normal pool of water. Does it look like good water? Uh, you'll have to make a check of some kind. So uh, I'm also sort of getting familiar with it. So I would say to check the water, you'll either need to make a. Um, I'll accept either alchemist, cook, or dungeoneer. I don't have none uh, of those. Or, may or maybe even scavenger. So that's fine. You don't have any of them. You can do something called beginner's luck. So you can still try skills even if you are not, air quotes, trained in them. Um, if you'd like, uh, anyone can help you if they, they want to do it instead. Uh, otherwise, you can just sort of experiment on your own. Which spell? Uh, which... Uh... Skill did you say? Uh, some of the skills, I think. Well, I don't know. You you can also suggest stuff. I think like survivalist would be okay. Scavenger might be okay. Uh, Dungeoneer, cook, or alchemist. Probably any of those might be okay. I have Dungeoneer three. That's the best of those skills that I have. I have cook three. Uh, I will allow you to help one another with Dungeoneer and Cook in this particular... Uh, maybe not Cook, actually. Um, but anyone can... So if if uh, 
Sorry, if uh, Corum wants to investigate, people can help him. However, here's sort of how helping works. Um, you can assist Corum, and it, it only takes, like, air quotes, one turn uh, if, if more people help. Uh, e even if he does it alone, it only takes one. However, uh, if Corum fails, whoever helps him also suffers the consequences um, if for his failure, whatever that happens to be. Um, if you don't help, then your reward for not helping is not being fucked, <laughs> basically. <laughs> well, uh, is that uh, does that seem like drinkable water? Would I be able to do a check and use my wise needs a little salt? I will accept that. <laughs> so I, I will allow you to help. Uh, if you use your wise here, however, I believe... Oh, uh, no, I think your wise is good. So... Uh, Eclem, I will allow you to help uh, without putting yourself in danger. So what wises do is you basically tell other people, like, hey, here's, uh, like, Eclem can actually fill people in on stuff without exposing himself to harm is the benefit of having a wise. Yeah, so I'll just explain to him that he's looking for, like, no oily residue on top of the water, no minerals floating. You know, I a little love bit it. of sediment at the bottom. I love it. I okay. know what I'm looking for. I've done it before. <laughs> okay, Coram. So, uh, you may roll uh, as many d6s as you have in the skill that you're going to use. So, uh, Torchbearer only uses d6s, and it is a straight up and down 50% for pass or fail. So, every one, two, or three you roll is a fail. Every four, five, or six you roll is a pass. Uh, and then, Luke, I would like you to roll 1d6, which is going to represent you helping. Uh, so despite you using a wise, I still want you to roll it, even though you're just adding it to to him. So you give him a pass. Pretty good. Okay, so should I uh, roll those separately? Or uh, we need to no, you, the... you can roll them together. Okay, so that's... It's not, uh, it's not bourbon by any chance. Nice. Okay, so that is uh, three successes. Uh, so um, with that, uh, b before I sort of tell you your results, uh, both um, Eclam and Nye, you'll see next to your skills uh, that there is uh, several boxes that say P or F. These represent passes or fails. Uh, in the world of Torchbearer, you learn from your experiences. Uh, so the skill that you just used, um, Corum, I believe, was Dungeoneer. Yeah? Yeah. You may select one pass next to that. Put a little check mark. Okay. Do I also get a pass for helping? Uh, you do in Dungeoneer, not in Cook. Um, oh, okay. What if I don't have any ranks in Dungeoneer? That's fine. You do it anyways. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you will... Uh, I'll explain advancement a little bit later. I'm keeping an eye on your character sheet. So, uh, Coram, how do you actually... Like, what do you actually do to... Um, well, I think I'll... First, I'll just uh, check for what... Um, what is your name? Eklam? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for what you told me. Just, like, check if there's any residue or if there's anything swimming in the water... And if I don't find anything, I'll just... <laughs> I see I don't a know, dead I'll rat. Just... <laughs> yeah, I hope I don't see any dead rats. No, I'll just see if there's anything that I can see. Or if it feels oily, or if there's anything wrong with the water. Yeah, so you, you use your senses, you sort of smell the water, and it, you, you don't really smell anything except for sort of this uh, moist cavern um, before... Uh... You know, checking the water out, it seems all right, and you drink some of it, and it is cool and and sort of like um, mineral laden. Uh, so it, it it's not great, but it actually seems safe um, when when you investigate it. So you found a source of water here. Um, as that happens, from the uh, passageway, the the sort of cramped passageway uh, to your left behind you, um, you all sort of hear someone. Um, walking for a second uh, and then you hear someone whistle 
um, a little bit, you hear a voice go, you boys sure are lost, aren't you? And uh, from the other passageway, you see a short uh, female halfling woman dressed in uh, leather armor. The clown says, oh, let's go over there. <laughs> She'll know what to do. Are there no normally sized people in this goddamn maze? I'm. Uh, then I realize I've cursed and I start a psalm because I'm a cleric and I shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Well, I would argue that we're the normal sized ones. My apo <sighs> yes. You are the one who's weird shaped. No, that is uh, nonsense. So the uh, the halfling woman giggles and says, uh, uh, Yeah, don't worry, boys. I, I don't think Porky here is going to get much further on his own and, and sort of indicates at Bartholomew. How dare you! I am a high priest of the circle. I am the reason why you and your people have stayed safe in this city. And I demand the respect that I am due. Oh, so the well, deacon we sent no one of them of us down here. The deacon we are all sent the same. The deacon sent one of their own down here. Well, surprise, surprise. It is only a mistake. Hopefully once we get back to the surface, everything will be cleared out. Uh, so she she rolls her eyes, and you see that the candle that she would, uh, is holding, she sets at her feet, and you see the, the flame sort of sputter. Uh, and she, she bows dramatically and says, uh, My name's Annabelle. Welcome to the Man Maker. Do you know about this place? You know, if you help me and we get back to the surface, you will be greatly rewarded. Uh, so she grins and says, uh, 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 I don't know about that. See, I'm a sinner, just like all of you, presumably. I, I don't think we're ever going back up there. I scoff. <laughs> well, I don't feel like I'm a sinner anymore. I think I'm better. She says, oh yeah? yeah it just... doesn't mean that we're going to make it up there. Keep on making your way back up and see how that fares you. Anyways, yeah, I, I'd be happy to help you. But you see, well, helping helping sure is thirsty work. Well, there's... well we, did, we did find some water here. You can just drink whatever you like. Oh, see, yeah, not, not just for me, but my friend here. And, and she, she holds up a coin purse. He's getting real thirsty. Maybe if if you help me, I'd be willing to help you. I well, turn around to Bartholomew and uh, tell him, "Well, you're a rich guy, aren't you? You can give her something." <laughs> uh, while they're talking, Iklam just walks up and pours some uh, cash into her pouch out of his pouch. I oh damn! Happy to help a fellow without without so without look. So you have uh, two dice worth of cash, don't you? Yeah. Can I give her one dice worth? You may. That's fine. Uh, yeah. So when you do that, I would also like you to roll a resource test. So you are going to roll one die right now. That's the one d, and it still stays by the same success or failure checks. So you want a four, five, or a six. Uh, so she she grins, um, and uh, what what I'll actually say is because your instinct would kick in, right? Um, so how instincts work is uh, th this is also sort of for the viewers. All three of you have an instinct, and what an instinct does is sort of as I explained, there is a turn counter that that I'm sort of counting behind the scenes that will dictate a few things, mostly light. Uh, if you have an instinct and you activate it, if it triggers, whatever action you take doesn't take a turn. Um, so in this specific circumstance, um, Eklum's instinct, I don't know if you want to tell people what it is, but your instinct activates. So I will say that your torch is still lit by this point. I'll assume that sort of like while this conversation happens, Eklum walks up and sort of pours some cash into her bag. Uh, Annabelle uh, winks at you, Eklum, and... Uh, she says, uh, oh, maybe you'll make it further after all. Oh, well, we should st stick together. Uh, I don't know about that, lover. 
Uh, I'm willing to help you, though. Consider uh, myself a uh, guide of this place. Tell me, what do you want to know? Well, what's down the tunnel you come from? Uh, so she points and says, oh, up that way? Well, uh, you see, there's lots of sinners down here. Uh, and the man maker is sort of a welcome mat to make sure that the people who come in don't overburden the place. It it seems like an instinct, just like uh, back in Sanctuary up above, that uh, people just really like their property management, and that usually involves kicking people out they don't like. Uh, up that way, well, you'll you can find your way to Helltown, but uh, let me tell you, that way. I don't know about going that way. Ooh, what's Helltown like? Hell, it's. Well, I mean, it's it's one of the few towns you're gonna find down here. It's called Helltown. Yep, because we are at the bowels of hell, my friend. Yes, that's probably. Uh, Iglong nods down the cave way that she came from. And says, should we go and meet the rest? Somebody else might know something. Oh, you could try, but uh, that's some distance. And see, well, as I explained, this is a bit of a welcome mat. And, uh, well, my friend here, you, you know how welcome mats work, don't you? And she, she sort of indica indicates to Eklum. What do you use a welcome mat for? You stomp to your... let people know they're entering your turf. You stomp your feet uh, on them. You clean your shoes. Uh, so she she rolls her eyes and says, uh, "These tall folk." And she she sort of leans into Eglum, but she she says it loud enough everyone can hear. And she says, uh, "They're none too bright, aren't they?" Uh, Eglum looks back and just kind of looks back at her and shakes her head. Shakes his head no. Welcome, well, Matt. Say what you don't have in your hat, you have in your legs. <laughs> okay, when you say that, she laughs. Uh, and she uh, she says, uh, uh, well, it looks like you don't have much legs either, fella. Anyways, what you use a welcome mat for, it's hiding a key in case you get locked out. To get into Helltown, to get into Helltown, you're going to have to find keys. Uh, and let me tell you, they're kind of well hidden. I mean, it's called the Man Maker for a reason. Well, do you know where any are? Oh, maybe. But I mean, uh, ladies gotta eat too. Uh, Iklam's gonna pull out his uh, water skin that's full of wine. Oh, and say, okay. This will get you well, a good buzz. Iklam, think about what you're doing. We may need this in the future. Now, who knows how rare food must be here or drink? Oh, it's just uh, a bottle of wine. She rolls her eyes and says, "Wow, surprised that Porky over there is worried about uh, losing his food." Who are you calling fat? You might. Uh, so she she grins coyly. Um, so what I will allow you to do, Eklem, is to make a, uh... I'm not surprised I don't, you ended up down here. I don't here. think there's persuader. Can you like a persuader? Is there a persuader? Yeah, there is. Uh, yes, you may. So, uh, no one else really... Um, you know what? I will allow you guys to help if you want, um, with persuader. Uh, and um, just sort of checking over some of your stuff here. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So yeah, you may make a persuader check, um, Eklum. Uh, and actually what I'll allow you to do is you may use your wine as a supply. So you will expend your wine, but I'll allow you to roll one more die. Oh, <laughs> ah, a fool and his goods are soon parted. So uh, she she uh, takes the wine and she she takes a swig and says, <clears throat> uh, 
You're not from the uh, Bread Bowl district, are you? Uh, am I? That's up to you. Uh, is Does she seem like she wants me to be? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to try and lie. It's up to you. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that, like, I'm not, but I'm going to say I am. <laughs> that she kind of wants me to be. Okay. Uh, you have thief wise, eh? Uh, I will allow you to. Um, actually, I don't think you can use this because you need to. Yeah. Okay. So we're good. Um, uh, so you may add a pass to your persuader, and uh, your torch begins to sputter uh, as uh, she says. Um, <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, perhaps you're going to make it through here after all. Um, and, uh, as, as your torch begins to sputter and it's basically going to go out after this conversation, something else is going to happen. But she says, um, uh, yeah, I might have a key. And, uh, she reaches into her, uh, belt pouch and she removes a small sapphire and she hands it to you. And she says, um... Uh, now I'm going to want payback for this, but yeah, there's four like this. You need four different kinds of gems. It's basically an entry tax. Uh, the doorway, let's just say, uh, one of their stupid fucking riddles that people down here seem obsessed with. Uh, uh the snake shall guide the way. And she, she sort of seems to be like... You know, she takes like a weird sort of stance with her hands and, you know, she's like mocking this thing. The eyes of the snake shall guide the way. Um, anyways, you find three more of those, put them in the eyes of the serpent, you've got your access. But I need to warn you, this place is crawling with monsters. Oh. What kind of monsters? That is. She says, oh, things go through here all the time. Uh... Kobolds, orcs, worse. Uh, not only that, but, well, uh, this place, it's uh, because everyone realizes that lots of new folks get dropped off here, and, well, the deacons up above want to make sure that you can find your penance by ladling you with goods, means that, um, you know, opportunists like to find their way down here and take advantage of the new naive folks. So you're going to notice a lot of them uh, have sort of you know, not made it very far. And she, she actually, like, tilts her head to the side, indicating it's something. And you guys notice behind a stalactite nearby, there's, like, a uh, skeletal hand on the ground. Um, and you guys have probably been passing skeletons your whole way in here. <laughs> um, she says, um, so there's, there's traps, uh, bandits, basically, and worse. Uh, so, you know, be careful. Uh, but you find three more of those, and you're on your way to Helltown. Well, thank you for the key, Blas. We'll be on our way. Hmm. Can I have a look at this key? Yeah, he'll show Coram and Bartholomew. Absolutely. Uh, I so, I would uh, reach out for it. Would you give it to me? Uh, yeah, he'll give it to you, but he's going to want it back before we continue traveling. When, uh, assuming that the other halfling is gone, is she? Because I'm going to start. Uh, well, she, yeah, so she basically, she waves you farewell, uh, and she heads back up the way that she came and quickly disappears. So, uh, uh, we're get, um, let's do this thing first. So, so, uh, Coram, you, you hold a small sort of chipped sapphire in your hand. Um. Uh, and, doesn't it make sense to make an appraise check or something like that? If sure, absolutely, like that? you can do that. Uh, so I believe it is not only... Uh, so yeah, you won't be able to use your whys um, for yourself anyways. You you can help other people with it, though. But you, one of your... Uh, oh, no, it doesn't fall in your nature descriptions. Uh, I believe instead of appraise, you could either use... Um, Dungeoneer I will accept. Uh, even Hagler I will accept if you wanted to 
to look at uh, over. Both of those are the same, so I'll just... So you may choose one. Yeah, I'll just choose Hagler, I guess. Doesn't really matter. All right. Um, uh, does anyone want to help Quorum? With uh, Hagler? Sure, I'll definitely do it. Yeah, I'll throw down a Hagler assist. So do I roll just one dice? Yeah, you both roll one if you're helping him. Can I use my uh, thief wise to, to not uh, get yes, a you may. discipline? Yes, you, you may. To not be disciplined, I like <laughs> Uh oh. And Bartholomew, please roll 1d6. Okay, so you get two successes uh, and three fails. Um, so, yeah, you, you guys may all add a pass to your Hagler. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, so you don't believe that this gem on its own would be worth very much. Basically, it's not going to be adding a resource. It won't even take, like, a pack thing if you just want to write it down somewhere. Uh, it does look a little bit chipped. You don't think it would be worth very much. Um, it, it almost looks like someone's been, like, that. this emerald has changed hands a lot. Uh, and sort of as you're spending time in this chamber examining it, your torch goes out. Uh, and not only that, but you feel the grind set in. So in the world of Torchbearer, there is something called Grind. Uh, as you travel uh, in the dungeon, you begin to... Oh, and I actually totally fucking forgot that you guys were fresh as well, but th that's not so big of a deal. You passed every single check you made. Um, uh, you are no longer fresh. You'll notice on your conditions uh, near the top of your character sheet, there's one that says fresh. So your fresh faces uh, are now gone, and they are probably not going to come back for a long, long time as hunger sets in, so you may add the hunger condition. Do we uh, remove the fresh? Yes, you do. Uh, every fourth turn, or every, like, fourth... Yeah, fourth turn, I guess, uh, in the world of Torchbearer, hunger and thirst sets in. Uh, if it is not treated, then things will get worse. Um, but you are all sort of, like, hungry and thirsty now. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations, yeah. Iklum. You've traded gold and fine wine for a worthless piece of glass. Uh, the Iklum torch the goes torch. out. I would just, uh, okay. I would just pocket the uh, diamond or whatever. Okay. If anything, she just made up the whole story. Well, at least we got something to go on. Better than us just wandering around. Mm. Uh, Iklum's going to hold his hand out for the torch. Okay. Um, Does anybody... Yeah, I mean, the torch is, has gone out, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, it did. Yeah. Okay, then I'll just light a new torch. Okay. And I'm going to walk over to the uh, basin, and I'm going to start drinking out of it. All right. So, yeah, I will say that... Uh... This place is fine. Uh, I don't know if they sort of intended for something like this to exist, but I'm fine with it. Uh, you guys may... Um, uh, you know what I'll... So ordinarily, uh, drinking and eating does not take any checks or anything. I'm going to say that because sort of the wall trickles down water sort of slowly and to drink from the basin sort of takes time, uh, unless you guys are making camp, I will say that it does take a turn to drink from the wall. But I'll, I'll allow you to... Um, no, I'm going to say one of you at a time. I need to start getting into the mood of Brutal Torchbearer. So one of you may drink from the wall right now. You guys can sort of stay here, but it'll take turns to do so. Do we need... Can we drink before we light the torch? Yeah, because we don't need light to do that, right? Uh, if you're in pitch darkness. Um... Doesn't bad shit happen to you? Well, uh, if you're in darkness, it's kind of bad. Um... Well, we don't know that. Fair. So I would I would drink without the torch. Okay. Uh so well so you guys have to decide like who wants to spend time drinking first. Who's getting drank? It's not gonna be me. Uh Iklum will go over and start drinking first. Okay. Um so yeah. So you drink from the wall. You may remove your hungry condition, but you do not regain f fresh. Okay. <coughs> okay, I will. I will drink next. 
Okay. And then Bartholomew, yes. presumably. So just to let you guys know then, uh, the very next turn that you guys do, you're all going to be hungry and thirsty again. So this is the trade-off I'm giving you guys. So you, you sort of spend time, you allow the basin to refill sort of in the darkness, you, you find your way there to sort of conserve light to the best of your ability. Uh, and you each take time to, uh, not quite camp, but you sort of take some time to uh, drink from the wall and um, do what you can. Uh, it's it's cold and not great, but you uh, you do okay. All right, let's quickly get uh, get going. I do not want to spend the rest of my days in this hellhole. Iklam uh, looks to Corum and holds his hand out and says, "The gem, please." It's it's not valuable anyway. I I'll just take care of it. Oh, you didn't pay for it. We're friends. I don't have to pay you. <laughs> of course, we're, we're all friends, right? We're here to help each other. If there's any Alrighty, pain... carry on. He uh, okay. nods up to Bartholomew and says, Your turn to light the torch, mate. All right, all right. I will hold my lantern. And, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so you light a torch here. Oh, and you're going to light a lantern. Yeah, I don't have a torch. Okay, got it. Um, I can just uh, give you a torch if you want one. Oh, can okay. You use the lantern maybe later. Cool, let's do that then. Okay. Um, all right, I'll actually go back up here because that's fun. Sorry, I'm just sort of this tracker. Well. Okay. Um, so, which way would you guys like to go? Would you like to go up the passage that the halfling uh, went through, this sort of like um, rising uh, smaller passageway? Or uh, do you want to uh, climb up the passageway that sort of slopes and, and looks like it opens up at the far end of this chamber? Um, if she went in the small passage, perhaps it is safer. She said that's where the gang of kids lives. The what? Uh, yep. Sorry, go ahead. There's a gang of kids living down there. Kids. People, oh. not necessarily children. Oh. Oh, well, you said kids. Uh, well, perhaps. Yes, kids. Perhaps what? And perhaps it is not safe. Then we cannot trust the people that are sent here. Well, all right. Let's. Hmm. Oh, perhaps people would be good. Uh, surely they will. They will be willing to help for the rewards I can bring. Yes. Well, so, uh, will they be mad at you because you belong to the people that sent them down here? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, if I am sure we can find some who are trustworthy, and of course, once I am brought back to the surface, they will be granted rewards that I'm sure they perhaps even a pardon. As a member of the clergy, I can... It is within my power. So, I mean, I have the torch, so why don't we just go over there? Yes, we're waiting on you, mate. And then I move. Okay. Uh, while we do this, another check has been made, and I know that you sort of wanted to keep it on the DL, but we're, we're just going to put it out here because part of Torchbearer, and I'll sort of point this out later, a large section of Torchbearer is that role-playing will actively reward you guys. Um, so Eklum is trying to steal the gem back. Uh, the way that we're going to do this is Eklum, you, you guys are going to make a pose test. So Eklum is going to make a criminal check, and Quorum... Uh, 
you have um uh you you would make an opposed criminal check but i do not believe that you have that skill uh so you're going to use something called beginner's luck and the way that this works is you have an option you may use your will basically there's only two ability scores in this game health and will which sort of represents like your physical abilities and mental abilities respectively uh you may use half of your will score so you may roll one die opposed to his criminal or you may use your you can expend your nature um so you would roll five but uh your nature will be reduced by one if you decide to use your nature i think i'll just use a normal will roll okay uh so you guys can go ahead and do that um if you have i guess at this point as well i was sort of reading over your traits i don't think anybody has anything that would really come into play at this point um actually i will say uh luke because halflings are easily overlooked uh, you may decide to use your trait now if you want, but you may only use your trait for your benefit once per session. So you'll never get to use it again if you decide to use it here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use it here. Okay. <laughs> so you may roll one more. So that is two successes. Uh, so uh, Corum, you, you can't, you, you only have one uh will that you can roll so you won't be able to notice him no matter what so the the halfling sneaks the gem out of quorum's pocket without him noticing uh, as you proceed up the passageway so sorry uh one more time uh which oh and then everyone's hungry again also um uh which way are you guys going I uh, but I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow the guy with the light. I'm just going to be at the back so that I'm in the dim light, yeah. creeping in the shadows. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I I think I wanted to go to following the the halfling. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you guys are all hungry again uh, yeah. because you made a check before you even left the room again. <laughs> so. Um, you ascend upwards into this sort of twisting cavern, and in several places you have to sort of squeeze through. Um, as you head in this direction, you notice that the passageway uh, closes a fair bit, um, and it looks like it'll be a challenge for basically all of you to get through. Um, and what this is going to require is a Dungeoneer check. Now, I believe all of you are carrying a backpack. Yes? Yeah. All, yeah. all of us. That's so, interesting. Yeah, so... Because all of you have a backpack, this will be more challenging for you, unless, of course, you leave your backpack behind. Um, but I'm going to require all of you to make a Dungeoneer check if you want to proceed further uh, up this passageway. Oh, geez. Uh, perhaps we should go the other way. Yes, that's what they said, but you make the choices because you have the light. <laughs> <laughs> How I did not. No, nobody mentioned that this place was too small to proceed through. Fine then. Let's let's just move back. We'll 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 find. Well, I think we can fit here. Maybe we can fit through here easily. Mm, I don't. Just normal sized people. I agree. Plus, I told you there was a bunch of kids living down here. Oh, if. <laughs> Is that a priest joke? What's going on? But um, I, no, I, just, I don't. It's it's too small. This is. I I can't be. Oh, then turn around. Go the other way. Oh, you can't leave me. I'll, I'll. You can't leave me alone. I have the light. No, we're gonna follow you, but you have the light. So if you want to go the other way, let's go the other way. Of, of course. All right. We waste so much time. We don't have many torches left. Well, I'm starting to get hungry. Uh, I and so am I. But uh, the more time we spend arguing, the more time we lose. So let's just go to the other way, and hopefully we can we can make it through. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to introduce a very important mechanic to the game. Um, 
so there is a trait. Uh, all, all of you have a collection of traits. Um, some of you have got it from your background or your race, etc. cetera. Um, I sort of explained to you guys that your traits don't have any mechanical bonuses. They basically just explain like a part of your character. Um, traits, sort of as I just explained to Luke, can be used for your benefit once a session at level one. Uh, they're not super beneficial, but they basically just add a die roll. However, you may use them to your disadvantage whenever you want. Now, you might be wondering why you would do that. The reason you do that is that you gain something called checks. And with checks, you can spend them when you're camping to basically like uh, represent you um, gaining experience or like drawing a map or uh, curing from conditions. Uh, uh, Karim, because you are a dwarf and one of your traits is you are born of earth and stone, which is basically just dwarven stereotypes, I will say that if you, uh, uh, you now you don't have to, like for a trait, you are not, you don't have to be, it's not mandatory and it's not announced by the GM either. So you guys can decide when your trait plays to your advantage or disadvantage. But if you decide to press on anyways through this tight squeeze, um, you will take a penalty, but you will gain a check uh, if if you don't budge on this issue. Because I imagine that you know you're, but it, it's up to you. So for future reference, now that I've told I know, you guys, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. So um, now that I've told all of you guys this rule, yeah. it's important that you pay attention to your traits and see when you can use them to your advantage and disadvantage, and you have to justify it to me. Well, Checks are very, very important because you cannot camp unless you have at least one check among the three of so, you. So my one of my trait is quick-witted, and the disadvantage is that it's hard to plan or I'm impatient. If we don't go in the, <laughs> the way that we were going, do I get one? Because <laughs> it's shitty planning. Because um, I'm changing my mind. It says you act you act on instinct. Oh. Yeah, but you're not though, right? I guess not really. Uh, it can be it can lead to difficulties when patience and planning are required. No, not so much because I I would say that's actually the opposite because you're saying like why would we go this difficult way when we can just go the other way? You know what? That makes sense. Right. So no. Uh, but that's f but what you just did. That's what I want. I want you guys to say like, hey, my treat says this. Can I use it for here? And then we'll sort of dictate. So here's where we're at. Uh, Coram, if you decide to push through the breach anyways, it's going to be even more difficult for you. I imagine, you know, you're sort of like frustrated. You're going to push on ahead regardless, but you don't have to do it. There's no penalty to not listening to your trade. It's only beneficial if you are penalized by it, if that makes sense. No, I think that makes sense. I think I would just, when uh, the other two just go back the other way, I would just, uh, without saying anything, I would just... Well, you have, you climb have, through this space. Sure, uh, you have the light, do you not? No, I don't. I don't. Well, has it. So, so in the darkness, you're going to try to climb through on your own. Yeah, I think I will. Okay, so, you, you can't see anything, but yeah. So you may make. Yeah, it. I'm just pissed. I want to go this way. So okay, <laughs> absolutely. So, so you may add a check. I think that uh, checks are found. Where it checks. I think I just click like here's uh, used against to just make a check there. Next to the trade. Um, yes, used against, yeah. Sure, okay. yeah. Uh, so let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just uh, so use fine. one. Uh, one yeah, don't worry about less. that. That's using for your benefit. Um, so what we're going to do here is you may use your Dungeoneer, which is, or you have to use it, uh, which is a, uh, three, three, uh, against a pretty big challenge, but you can go ahead and try. Uh, probably will fail. Uh, do I get a penalty or not? Like, do I only use uh, two, no, or? so, so you will just roll normally. Uh, I'm just making like the, uh, it's called obstacle, but I'm making the DC higher basically. Oh, okay. You know, so it's one success. Uh, so I'm going to say that um, you uh, begin to push yourself into the breach. Um, but you're, uh, as you begin to push through, you get caught. Uh, and your 
as, as you're sort of like trying to push your way through, um, your uh, backpack rips a hole in it, uh, but you don't notice because you're in pitch darkness. Um, and but you you find that you can't really make your way through anymore. Uh, when you walk back with the rest of the group, um, you notice that there is a hole in your bag. Uh, and as you check it over, it appears that your uh, hammer has been lost somewhere. So okay. you can remove the hammer from your inventory. <laughs> Those yeah, I don't, I don't say anything. I just look okay, around. You just come back. You're just like, I, I take a piss <laughs> or something. Yeah, I like <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, are you guys going back the way you came, or you're going up into the other passageway? We're going back. We're tr we're backtracking. Right. So you're you're back in the basin chamber, and then where do you go? We go the other way. The the way. Okay. In the uh, but still pressing on ahead. Yeah. Uh, so you um, <clears throat> and you have a torch lit. Do you not? Yes. Hold on. Why don't we rest? Why would you rest? Basin, because then we can all take turns drinking and eating. Uh, we don't have infinite torches. We have to. We have to get out of here. I don't plan to stay here. No, I'm not tired yet, and we have some water with us, so I think we should just press ahead. Alrighty, right, let's go. Okay. Uh, so you head up into the sloped passageway um and as you begin to uh make your way there uh you enter a sort of like odd elongated chamber it, it basically looks like a tunnel um but you notice that the walls look kind of different there there's lots of like cracks and crevices in it uh the ceiling like bulges downward quite a bit you can see water is dripping from it in places um that this tunnel um sort of like snakes uh left and right but continues on ahead and it looks like it levels out near the top of it but uh the the slope is a little brutal here uh the, the floor is damp um and uh is sort of like strewn with rubble along the way is there anything you guys would like to do or just keep going i think i would check out the walls like the uh breaches in the walls if there's if there's anything interesting there Okay, would anyone like to help him? Uh, sure, I guess I will. Okay, if so... I don't help, can I do a different action while he's doing that? Uh, no. Basically, you okay. guys have to decide what... Well, I mean, uh, from the story perspective, you could, but for turn perspective, no. Like, the turns will still okay. count. It will go to turn 10, basically. Um, okay. So, uh, because... Delving. Do I get a check mark for a fail when I try to? Oh yeah, go you do. This? Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Um, so you may make another uh, engineer check, uh, or alternatively, because delving is in your nature, you can also roll your nature instead if you if you want. Um, I think that's how it works. I, I may be wrong here, um, which will allow no. you to roll. More dice. No, I'll just, I'll just use the engineering. I don't think it's that important. Okay. Uh, so Bartholomew, you said you were helping. Do you have dungeoneer? No. You could help with something else if you can justify it to me. Otherwise, uh, you can't really help him. You don't have as much experience. Oh, okay. Well, since I just don't trust him. That's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do have scholar. Would you accept but... uh, scout? I will accept a scout, yeah, to help. Absolutely. Now, now you will be putting yourself into because it's not like a wises or anything. So if if right, you guys yeah, fail, it'll be... you fail together. Understood. I guess I absolutely. I guess I can't help. Uh, so one of you has to help the other. So who is actually doing the check and who's helping? Uh, I have uh, I have a three in engineering. Yeah, my scout's only a two. So maybe you should okay. roll, and I'll help you. Yeah, you roll yeah, one. Makes sense. Nice. Nice. Okay, three successes. Um, so uh, you begin to investigate the 
walls nearby, uh, and it looks like um, they've uh, sort of been carved out um, by something. Like something has sort of dug into these chambers. It's it's done like a, a somewhat good job of trying to make it look natural, but uh, otherwise it it uh, looks um, yeah. So somebody has sort of dug like small holes into the walls here. They're pretty tiny, and you don't even think that you could squeeze through a lot of them. But uh, as you are uh, investigating. The room, yeah, it, it, it looks like that something is sort of dug small tunnels into the walls of this chamber. Can we shine the light into the holes to see if there's anything in there? Sure, I'm going to say that uh, you sort of hold up your torch to investigate, uh, and you notice something sort of like brownish uh, on the ground. Oh, no. <laughs> is it moving? Uh, no. Uh, you reach down and pick it up, and you see that it is a small, sort of coppery scale. Uh, it's about as big as your, uh, like a little bit smaller than the palm of your hand. That's much better than what I thought. I thought we were in the latrine tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and from all the tiny holes, you know. <laughs> and you think a giant hand size scale is better? Um, <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> me, the character. Anything like that? What, what kind of creature could have that sort of scale? You may make a lore master if you want, if somebody has lore master. Nope. If you're not. Nope. Nobody has it? Nope. Uh, nope. I could have sworn Bart had it, but okay. Uh, also, you had a torch, right? It It's uh, going to go out this turn. Uh, anybody has another torch? Uh, I'm like walking around with a not lit torch in my hand. Yeah, that's fine. So, so I'll just light it up. Okay. So yeah, your torch goes out. A new one is lit. So that is... Man, I sure wish I aligned is this. Is it properly. just lore master, or can we use something like uh, dungeoneering or survivalist? Um, to find out what it is, no. It's basically exclusively either a wise, if you guys have it, or a lore master. Um, but no, that, that uh, is a good suggestion, though. As we're walking, I just kind of want to keep like special eye out. Can I use Hagler okay, to try? Okay, so so. Because it's not an instinct, you may make a scout check to look around, but Bartholomew will uh, be asking. I want to know if that scale is valuable. Can I roll maybe a haggler or something? Uh, sure. Could, yeah, okay, cool. Can I help him with a shrewd appraisal with my wives? Oh, absolutely. Yes, you can. All right, so I'm going to roll 46. So what do I roll or what do I do? Uh, you just roll one die, uh, okay. and you you can add a pass or fail depending that on is, what he gets. That is two successes. Two successes. Um, so I'm gonna say nope. you do you do succeed, uh, and uh, yeah, Nai, you you do have Hagler, so you can add a success as well because he succeeded. Okay. But you basically determine that this is valueless. It's detritus. It's it's not it's useless. It won't really do anything. I as, as you're investigating it, you see the halfling sort of like examines the room and suddenly the floor gives out underneath him and he drops. <laughs> um, so, uh, Eklum, as you are investigating the chamber, you fall into a pit. Uh, worse, uh, as you drop, you, you don't drop very far, but then you feel uh, something shoot into your body uh, as, as you fall into this trap. I'll just uh, run up to you and yell, leave the light up here. Uh, so you can see, <laughs> leave the light up here. I love that. Yeah, so you guys are plunged into darkness as Eklum drops into a trap. Uh, and Eklum, I would like you to gain uh, both the wounded and sick condition. Uh, actually, no, I should just give you one because it's really brutal. I'm going to give you the wounded condition. Well, that is isn't um, injured. Uh, pardon? Uh, there's injured. There's no wound. Uh, injured, sorry. Yeah. Okay. 
you are injured. As you drop, uh, you your torch clatters to the ground, and Eklum, you can see Bartholomew and uh, Corum can't really see much. Uh, you you uh, look around and you see that you've fallen into a small pit trap. Um, your your body has sort of been penetrated by a few of these small sort of crude wooden stakes. Most of them broke off on your drop, but they punched through your leather armor and you are bleeding a little bit. Uh, now you may notice, I'll uh, sort of explain something before this other thing happens, that you guys don't have hit points. Um, basically what happens is that you guys gain conditions. Uh, if you either gain too many conditions, you will die. Or if you are injured or sick, uh, you are really at risk. If you, uh, I will give you a heads up, um, but if you are injured or sick and you do something that's like really risky, there, I, I will give you forewarning. Uh, like I have to tell you before you do it. But if, if you were to example, already be suffering from the injured condition and be like, I'm going to try to jump over this pit, I would say, okay, but if you fail, you will die. Um, and then you can make your decision from there. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a little more complicated. So, however, when you fall in here, uh, as the two of you are sort of in investigating the scale and are suddenly plunged into darkness, you hear chirping come from the walls. Uh, what would you guys like to do? <laughs> Throw the torch. I would just walk up to the hole and look down and see like how deep is this if you're injured or whatever. Uh, I'm gonna say that it is only about six feet down. Okay. So it's like twenty feet to us. <laughs> yeah, it's like double. Uh, I'll say. Uh, so what are the, what is this? Uh, I'll say, call it, yeah. Take care of the chirping. I'll try to get him out. No, I can do this. I have a, I have a rope. Ah. Uh, but I'm taller. Pull uh, out my rope and you can't put it down to the hole. Don't uh, don't don't leave me behind. No, I won't go down. I'll just uh, pull him up. Yeah, Ickling walks over and uh, grabs onto the rope. Okay, so so let's do this then. So, uh, uh, Karam, I I don't know if I just said your name wrong. Dream. What's mm -hmm. the name? Uh, Corum. Uh, Corum. Corum, you, uh, um, you open your backpack and it's dark. Uh, <laughs> you can't... Well, I can still feel a rope, can't I? Uh, okay. I'll say that you begin to dig around in your pack. Um, but it's gonna take a little bit. Bartholomew, uh, what are you doing while this happens? Well, I do, actually, I do have on my, uh, pouch slot a lantern and i would probably hearing the chirping even though like my character would want to conserve resources he's shitting his pants right now so i would use my lantern to light up like i want to know what's coming okay great uh so you light it um and uh as you do so um is that enough that was one two three 11 okay um so you light your tort or your lantern i'm gonna let you know lanterns uh give light for three people uh and last three turns uh do you have oil yes you should have oil uh, yeah right so uh a flask of oil is actually two flasks in it yeah uh and a flask um lasts for uh, uh one flask of fuel will light a lantern for three turns uh, yeah, so you light it, and it is just in time to see beady, glimmering red eyes surrounding you in the holes nearby, uh, and you hear some odd chirping and giggling, almost from these sort of reptilian voices. Caught him! Caught him! Dwarf! Uh, <laughs> Eklum, what would you like to? You're you're at the bottom of the pit. Uh, I'm going to say that your torch uh, sputters and begins to fade. Uh, before it starts to fade, can I run over and grab onto the rope? The rope ain't down yet. Corum is digging through his backpack in the dark. Right. Well, am I not lighting him now? Uh, you are now, but I'm going to rotate through it. It takes you a turn to light your lantern. You okay. see what I'm saying? So no, you're that's... lighting it as he's digging through his bag. That makes sense. Uh, could I yell out, grab my rope! 
and just throw mine up, it's worn on my body. Uh, sure. If you're going to be throwing it, I would like you to make a something called beginner's luck health check. So, uh, what is your health skill? Um, I have this open. I just closed on me. Five. So you may roll either uh, two die, or you may uh, sorry, expend three. your. Uh, sorry, your health is three. Okay, so you may yes. either roll one die, uh, which is half of it, or you may expend some of your nature to roll your whatever your nature is. But your nature goes down by one, not maximum. Uh, just... I'm just gonna go with the one. Okay, roll away. Uh, you untangle your rope off of your body and throw it up to the top of the hole. Uh, your your torch uh, expends itself, uh, and you guys are sort of like plunged into darkness. Uh, Bartholomew lights his lantern, and uh, we'll go sort of to the air quotes top again. Uh, you guys sort of like you you hear uh, Eklam yell like "Grab my rope!" and uh, you you see it like thrown to the top of the hole, but there's nothing really attached to it, so it. it begins to slide. Um, Coram, would you like to... You just fish your rope out of your backpack as this happens. <laughs> what would you like yeah, to I'll do? Yeah, I'll just Coram? let the other rope slide down and let my rope down the hole. Okay. It's probably uh, so much So, so uh, Eklum, your, your rope just sort of like clatters on the ground next to you, and this one uh, it extends down into the pit. Um, I'm going to go to Bartholomew, and then the things in the hole are going to do something. Uh, since I'm holding a lantern and my shield, I don't have a weapon, right? That is correct. Uh, <laughs> so I guess I'll just... Uh, dwarf, quickly! <laughs> leave the rope! There's creatures! We're getting attacked! Well, take care of the creatures. I'm busy here. I can't! I'm holding a lantern! <laughs> you idiot! Let this Get fool, ground, let this fool down the pit at... Worst case scenario, we can run while he's getting devoured, but quickly. Uh, yeah, just ignore okay. him. Uh, absolutely, that's that, okay. Can, can, uh, saying that, can I can I make my loner trait go against me? Uh, sort. I I was thinking that the problem is is that there's no real like check here that you're doing. I guess that's uh, true. perhaps here here in a second. Yeah, it actually has to like affect a role. Uh, against oh, you okay. in some way. Okay. So, so basically what's going to happen is that you see small uh, reptilian creatures begin to emerge from the holes basically all around you. Uh, they stand about like knee height to a man, about the, the height of a halfling. Some of them carry slings, small spears, uh, but worse, one of them emerges with a strange clay pot in their hand uh, and it uh, chirps and hurls it at Bartholomew. Um, so basically, uh, uh, fights work a little bit differently, and, and they're a little tricky. Um, basically, to explain to you guys, like this is one of the things that I'd kind of house rule a little bit, or I'd want to, but because we're doing this for a review, I, I, even if I'm not sure about the mechanic, I want to keep it as intended. So basically, you guys are getting attacked by a bunch of kobolds, and what we sort of have to do at the top of a conflict is you guys have to decide what your goal is. Um, so what exactly would you guys want to do? You have a few options. Um, you could try to like fight to kill them. You can try to drive them off. So just try to like make them scared enough that some of them run away. You can try to run away. Uh, you have a couple of options here. Um, what sort of conflict would you like to... What, what is your intent? Um, there's so some of the examples. There's like capture, uh, convince, um, drive off, kill, uh, pursue, or flee, or other. You can sort of make something up, but you guys all have to decide at this point sort of what your goal is in this encounter. Do we decide together or everybody on their own? Yeah, you do have to decide together. Uh, which like is we one do of the have to have like a yeah. final decision. Uh, one the of the things I'm not, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, you can't really change your goal. I don't know how I feel about that, but that's how the rules are written. So we're going to try to do that. Once you sort of decide a goal, 
the, the fight starts. Um, why, so why let's don't just get Taka hoffling out and then we'll run away from these things. I want to just uh, run You guys away. talk about it. I'm going to get coffee. I'll be two seconds. I... <laughs> we need to run away. Leave him. Yeah, let's. <laughs> no, we'll have to get him out first. We won't leave him behind. We need him. Do we? He's just giving his well, stuff he has away. Well, two more torches, doesn't he? What? He has two more torches. I guess he does. Fine, let's... <laughs> Lift him quickly. I'm not going to... Uh, depending on how wide this pit is, maybe you guys should jump to the other side of the pit and then raise me up and then we can run away. I'm Instead not, of raising me up and then all of us yeah. having to jump over. That seems like a terrible... Do we have to jump over? Is this the whole... I thought it was just a hole in the middle of the... Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining just as like... As oh, a... okay, if you guys can go around. Yeah, I okay, imagine it's a... I thought we could, I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to wait until Beard's back and ask. Yee yeah, yeah. So our goal is to run away. I guess in the meantime, I'll take a look at the chat, see if there's any interesting comments. No, there isn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's Charles. true. Uh... Okay, cool. Have we decided on a course of action? We are running away. Um, how big is the hole in the ground? Like, can we just walk around it, or do we have to jump over it? Uh, it doesn't cover the entire. You can walk around it. Okay. So fleeing. Yeah, we is... just want to run away. Okay. Uh, so step one, um, is you choose a conflict captain. So who's in charge of this? decision to flee uh well i think it's bartholomew's shtick to just be like no let's uh, live another are you, day are you guys, are you I guys mean, okay, I'm okay with, with saying i'm the one who's saying get out of here i don't oh, really get... care <laughs> okay well i just want to get this halfling out of here you have to choose a conflict captain like who, who, bartholomew who... could i was just saying if he doesn't want to... oh, okay all right so Bartholomew no. is your conflict captain. Uh, don't worry, he's not team leader forever. Um, oh, ultimate so, power, finally. <laughs> so because you are rolling, you're going to roll for something called disposition. A disposition is basically what represents your hit points for this fight. Um, so the way that it works is you are going to roll uh, for flee uh, either scout. Uh, oh, actually, just scout. Uh, you're going to be rolling your scout plus your, uh, or sorry, and adding it to your. Now I don't health. have scout, but my instinct is always plan an escape. Can I use that? Uh. Hmm. You let me pick it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just sort of because. Um, trying to figure out so I'm, I'm not doing what the rules intend here but yeah i don't want to like i want to give you a way that you can sort of have this work uh you're still going to use beginner's luck okay uh, if your nature applies in a conflict you may roll it in place of the listed raw ability oh that one okay i see uh no uh not yet <laughs> okay um but um, I will, uh, yeah, we'll still do this the way it is. So because you don't have scout then, um, to generate a really appropriate listed ability and add successes to the rank of the listed base ability, um, rolls four successes and adds that to whatever. Okay, yeah, so I don't think you add any of your friend's shit either when you roll this. Um, yeah, so, uh, however, does anybody else have Scout? Yes, I do. I do. I have two. Okay, so you guys may... Oh, in, in that case, then, may I recommend that Eklam is... Uh, or or even, uh, like, one of the two of you takes Conflict Captain, then, because you'll give the people more... It'd make more points. sense for you since you're at the top of the pit. Yeah, yeah then I'll just do it. I mean, I have... No, my power, right. my uh, crown. 
So yeah, now you may roll your scout. Was that what you just rolled, I heard? Yeah, that's what I just rolled. Okay, so uh, you get two successes. So you may add two to your health score. So what is your health? A five, but I think we get uh, negative one because we're hungry, right? Uh, yes, thank you for reminding me. So that would bring you to a total of seven, and then with your hunger, that brings you to six. Uh, so if you want to, so basically what you have to do next is you have to sp uh, spread disposition equally among the party. So everybody has two health, two disposition. Um, oh, everybody helping adds one die. So actually, um, uh, and it doesn't stack multi multiplicatively. So, uh, Eclum, you can roll an additional one die because you also have it. Hey, okay, everybody hey. gets... So you have one extra disposition uh, nigh that you may give to whomever you choose, or you can keep it for yourself. Are the... Uh... Cobalt's at the bottom of the pit or at the top? Top. Okay, then I'll just give it to Bartholomew. Okay. That is a wise right, choice. <laughs> Great. But you're the one freaking out. Oh, yes. I'm really, <laughs> very concentrated on running away. Okay. Uh, so then I determine what the Kobold's disposition is, which I believe I already have. Um, I do. Uh, so, uh, several of them seem to be, like, staying, uh, in the pit, but four of them seem to emerge to oppose you. Um, we then go to generate disposition, which I did already. Uh, did that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now you guys choose, uh, three Actions. So basically, the way that disposition or the way that combat works in Torchbearer is you have four actions, um, which basically just works for the equivalent of like rock, paper, scissors. Uh, and I'm actually going to move this over to the main screen. Uh, and um, basically, the way that this works is your options are attack, defend, feign, and maneuver. Now, to, to sort of explain, this isn't just for, like, fighting to the death. This is for everything. So they're supposed to be sort of nebulous. You have to describe, like, if, if it was a conversation, for example, you would still have attack, defend, feign, and maneuver. So an attack would be, like, using logic to try to, like, overwhelm someone. A feign would be, like, you know, playing to someone's emotions rather than that maybe even uh, lying, a maneuver... Yeah. Yes, yeah, so stuff like that. So you have these four options. You'll see some of them do better against others. Um, and your gear will sort of play a role, but I'm, I'm going to sort of leave that up in the air for now. Between you guys, you decide what three actions you're going to take in order. Again, really think about this like rock, paper, scissors. So you can say like attack, attack, attack. You can say like defend, defend, defend. Because it's fleeing, because you're not actually fighting, attack would could be for example and and again it's it's more so for flavor but like Charging attack through. could be like i i turn and sprint away yeah or uh defend could be like i hold my ground and try to fight the kobolds away or whatever um so don't really think about it like that first you okay. should just sort of decide the three things that you're doing uh attack defend uh fame maneuver you get three actions each of you is going to take one um, after you decide the three actions that you're going to take nigh, you are going to give those three actions to your party members. Um, you guys can sort of talk amongst yourselves, but nigh is the conflict captain, so he decides who's doing what. I guess I'll... I'll if you want to give me a maneuver, I'll do a maneuver. <laughs> well, I think I should do a maneuver to uh, pull up Eklum. Okay. I think that would be a maneuver. That makes sense. Uh, and I guess I will hold my shield and try to push these tiny monsters away while you do this so let's let's say it's defend <laughs> yeah okay. i guess that makes sense and what's your third and Ikle, action? what would you do probably after i pull you up uh, or you could uh, uh, after you pull me up i would probably defend I'm already heard i you don't really want to uh, run you could just do an attack to run because we all would probably run next round yeah, actually, that makes more sense. I'll do an attack to run. And what is the order of things that you are doing? 
I'm I think first Bartholomew would defend because okay. he would like give us space. Okay. And then I would pull up Eclim and then he would run away. Run away. Uh, sorry. And what what is your action for um, purposes of like the RPS? I'm. You said you're pulling him up. I think it's the defend for? maneuver defend or defend maneuver attack. Yeah. Yeah. Should I start defend by describing my my thing since I'm. Uh, let's, uh, well, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I just, I need to lock this in. So this is correct, right? Bart is doing D. Uh, yeah, that's uh, right. Corum's doing maneuver and Eaglem is doing attack. Okay. Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah. So Bart, you, um, you turn, you're holding a lantern in one hand, a shield in another, and four kobolds, uh, emerge out of the walls surrounding you, yipping in glee. I tried to j just like put my shield in front of myself and I try to like almost attempt to perform shield bashes but they're more like st just movements to try to keep them away and I shout by the order of the circle I am a barrier and you cannot go through but uh, you can still you know you can hear the fear in his voice <laughs> okay absolutely for copyright reasons he couldn't say you shall not pass yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Also, it's not a Balrog, uh, it's just Kobolds. I'm supposed to decide for myself, but I have no um, in independent idea whatsoever, so I just randomly roll for what the monsters do. They are choosing Fane. Uh, so, and these two things happen simultaneously, so they interact with each other. So in the RPS of uh, Defend versus Fane, let's take a look. Um, defend versus Fane means that um, you hold your shield out, and as soon as you do, one of the kobolds from behind you uh, pulls out a uh, small clay pot and basically like whips it at you. Uh, so you defend, but they, they fake you out and attack you from behind as you are left uh, defenseless. Ah. Uh, so defend, <laughs> defend fails here. Uh, they get a free uh, feign attempt. Uh, so... Uh, it's plus one success, so they immediately, uh, something shatters, uh, on the back of your head, uh, and with Fane, they get to select, uh, what sort of penalty they're gonna inflict on the rest of you guys. Um, oh no, that's Maneuver, rather. So, uh, you lose one disposition, Bartholomew, as, uh, this, this pot explodes on the back of your head and, and flames sort of, like, knock yeah. you to the ground. Where are my disposition written? Uh, it, it was allocated to you at the beginning, so you have three. It was the thing that... Um, oh, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a... Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm wondering if there's a place no. in my character sheet no. to write it. There's not, because it changes every fight. Okay, um, cool. So I have uh, two left. So, yeah, so sorry, Fane versus Defend is an independent test, actually. Versus Fane... Yeah, I don't know. I what, you get isn't that what you did? Like oh, you rolled and uh, you didn't. Yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. No, because it's not a free shot. I, I keep getting it mixed up with maneuver. So what you will actually do is um, Bart is going to roll uh, a health roll. Okay. And they are going to roll a scout roll, kind of. So since I have three health, do I roll three d six? That is correct. Yeah. Um, alternatively, you may use your nature because one of humans' nature is running, is it not? Yes, it is. Yeah. So again, you you can mulligan that because I just sort of remember we're learning the rules here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Not... Yeah, I will probably. Can't... Okay, so if I can use my nature, do I just win? Uh, no, they're going to roll opposed to you. Just okay. going right now. Okay. Oh, whoops. That was not... I was a dumb guy. <laughs> uh, so they they get two successes, and how many did you get? You got one. One plus my nature, I guess. Uh, no, not plus your nature. You can roll your nature instead. So you can roll that. So what is your nature? Well, the running, I think. Uh, yeah, but what is the number? What is the number? Oh, six. Oh, so okay, so I, I get it. Okay. okay. Yeah, that is fine. 
and you're trying to beat two successes. Uh, it only looks like one, but because of the Kobold's weapons, they get an automatic success. All right, so... So you get two. Oh, <laughs> so, shit. Uh, because you tie, uh, if you can use some kind of trait here to make yourself vulnerable, you can. You will get a check. Uh, otherwise, if there is a tie... Um, you're going to basically roll a die to see whether or not you get hurt. So those are your options. Okay, so I'm either using a trait to p make myself vulnerable. Um, or or there's a, about a 50% chance you get hurt from this attack. Okay, so what I'm thinking is because of my loner trait, I was already kind of trying to... I wasn't. I was mostly. I was more defending myself than them. So I kind of got out of position because of that, and that's what got them to like flank me. I guess. Okay, I love it. So if you break a tie in your opponent's uh, favor, I believe you get two checks. Um, so I put I'm just going to verify that quickly. Two on use the gang. That is correct. Uh, yes. Yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, and I'm just checking all the traits. Um, any traits against yourself. Uh, breaking a tie in your opponent's favor earns two checks. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so you lose one disposition, as the, the description I said previously still applies. You are hit by some kind of bomb by one of these kobolds um, <laughs> and are sort of like thrown to the ground. So the next maneuver is uh, core using maneuver so you you lower the rope i'm going to say that you sort of like help eklum out uh however uh th this is sort of going to take part outside of this fight what i'm going to do is eklum you pulled your rope out of your bag and you threw it up and nobody took it it is now coiled on the ground if you pick it up you guys will be stuck in this combat for another round you're you are going to basically forfeit your thing and somebody's going to get attacked or you leave your rope here and climb up uh, I'm going to leave my rope behind. Okay. Uh, you climb up the rope, and, um, uh, oh my god, I keep forgetting your fucking name, Corum. Um, you are going to make a maneuver against defend. Uh, so maneuver versus defend means that it is a versus, so, uh, the two of you are going to roll opposed to one another. A maneuver in a flea is... Flea maneuver is health. So you're going to roll your health unless you have something else that applies, like your trait or your nature or something. I don't think so for a dwarf. Well, uh, I do have honorable. I could use that, I guess. I think uh, because I'm helping him out of the pit. Um, hmm. No man left behind. Okay, I'll say that you can add an additional roll, but because this is to your benefit, you can only use this once per session. Do you still want to use it? No, I don't think so. I think I'll just... No, okay. I'll just use health. You That's just on it. Yeah, so you just use health, and they are also going to be rolling health uh, opposed to you. Um, which the kobolds, I don't think, have are very good okay, at It's at just all. one success. It's not too great. Uh, they get. They also get one success. Um, so because it is opposed, uh, again, unless you can think of a way to, you can break a trait in their favor uh, to have them overcome you somehow, or uh, if you don't want to, um, then I guess just. Uh, we'll try to we'll we'll do a second roll to determine best two out of three. So those are your options. Let them win now and gain some checks, or roll again and test your luck. No, I think I'll just roll again. Okay. So just the full roll again, or just one d six? Uh, yeah, let's do full roll again. That's fine. That's acceptable. I don't think this is how you're supposed to do it, but whatever. I'm trying to keep it reasonably fast for listening purposes. Uh, like and, okay, so I'm going to say it. it's 
uh, in their favor this time. Well, so they, they only defend, uh, and you do a maneuver. So I'm going to say that you do help Eklum out of the pit. Uh, and the kobolds, uh, now that there's three of you, seem to be uh, quite a bit more, like, iffy about what's going on. They, they sort of, like, cower uh, from you guys a little bit. Um, <laughs> they just hear me shouting. A <laughs> ah. versus test. Yeah, basically, as, as Bart, like, picks himself up off of the ground, um, more or less. Uh, basically, the, the kobolds would heal themselves, but they're not missing any disposition at this point, so they kind of just wasting an action. That's fine. So, Eklum, you get to the top of the pit, uh, and you decided to use attack, so what, what are you actually doing? Uh, running away. Okay, so you turn and flee. So, attack in uh, fleeing combat is a... Suit or flee is a scout check. We'll see what they roll. Accidentally open Skype. That's great. Uh, they're going to do another defend. So you uh, are going to get to do this like independent. Um, so you may roll scout. Uh, you got two I fails. Double fail. Okay. Uh, so that's fine. So you turn and. Uh, you begin to run uh, from the kobolds uh, as you make your way to the end of the chamber. So now we go back to the top. Um, do we get so any? Guys... Um, uh, do we get any pass or fail check marks for the uh, skills that we use in combat? No, no. Okay. Uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, yeah, specifically, I think you get one, but I mean, I'm thinking that. Uh, no, you don't. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say for now, when, when you're in like an actual fight, you're not going to gain any. Uh, OK, so uh, basically what you guys are doing is you need to reduce their disposition to zero to be able to escape. Um, they have four right now. They're still sitting at four, so we start over from the top. So Corum, uh, or the, the three of you, decide what three actions you're going to take, and then who's going to do them in what order. What did you roll for defend again? Uh, for defend in a flea conflict is health. Health, OK. Uh, defend cannot reduce their disposition. It can only restore yours. OK, well, then that does make sense. Um, okay. Yeah, we should just all run away, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to. I mean, I'm thinking I would roll an attack as a part of just running away. Or is there a maneuver or something we can do to keep them behind us? Yeah, maybe. Uh, maneuver, maneuver only penalizes them on their checks. Okay. Well, let's just all do an attack roll, I guess. Attack, attack, attack. And what order, yeah. Coram? Up to you. Uh, same order as before. Okay, so it looks like this. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right, let's go. So, Bart, you are up first. You stand up, picking up your lantern, I imagine. Uh, and the kobolds um, make a maneuver against you. Uh, so attack versus maneuver looks like it is a versus. So the two of you will oppose one another. Uh, the, the kobolds uh, move out of the caverns and begin to sort of jab at your heels. Uh, I'm going to say one of them holds open a bag, uh, Bart, as you attempt to run past them and throws like powder in your face in an attempt to blind you. <laughs> uh, so you may make a, uh, what did you do? You did attack. Yeah. Uh, so that is a scout, which if you don't have, you can roll. Oh, uh, it's in your nature to run away. Humans are, humans have it in their nature to run. So you may roll your nature and it's not taxed. So your nature score does not go down because it is part of your nature to do this. Cool. Um, the kobolds. Bowl. Uh, maneuver nothing, so they get. So it is one, two, three, four successes. Oh wow! Well, they're not going to beat that. <laughs> okay, so that was an attack versus maneuver. So I apologize; it's taking me a little bit used to get used to this. Attack versus maneuver is a versus, so you reduce their disposition by your margin of success. So how many successes did you get? Um. One, two, three, four. Uh, okay. You lead the group away successfully from the kobolds. How do you do it? I basically, um, thinking quickly on my feet, 
I realize that um, how do I do this? Um, I, I guess I just uh, point in a direction. I'm like, all right, let's go, 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 go. <laughs> I just run. Great. Uh, Bart sort of leading the way, fleeing away from the uh, remaining kobolds up the end of the passageway. Uh, they they chirp and sort of like raise their weapons behind you as you, you all run, but they don't pursue you any further. Uh, so what I'm actually going to say, I'm, I'm sort of going to retcon what I said previously. You guys may either add one pass or one fail to a check that you did in in that thing. Uh, but yeah, you won. You managed on escaping. And I don't think anybody got hurt. Did Bart get hurt a little bit? I lost, lost one disposition. disposition. Yeah. yeah, Bart got hurt, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, so something will happen to you while you guys add your respective... Uh, and keep in mind, Bart, so for example, like because you used your fleeing nature there to win, you can add one success to your nature. Cool. Um... However, Bart, I'm going to say that uh, fleeing, sort of running away from the uh, creatures. Um, just one second. Uh, you, you sort of like lead the, the group away to the best of your ability, but uh, you begin to feel fear uh, creep into your heart as okay. you run, and you now take the afraid condition as well. Cool. So it says OB3 will. What does that mean? Don't worry about that just yet. Okay. I'm going to explain that later. Um, so you guys run into this passageway beyond. Hopefully you have added your successes or failures. I'm going to explain how success and failure work right now. So during gameplay, your skills and abilities can increase. Uh, some things like nature and the like will only go up in between sessions. Uh, but your skills can improve as we play. And basically, the way that it works is uh, if you get... Um, so I'm just opening this thing up. Uh, once you have attempted to use a skill equal to uh, the current number and fail a number of times, uh, if, if you pass it a number of times equal to the rating and fail a number of times equal to one less than the rating, it immediately goes up. Cool. Um, so f let's take um, Corum, for example, because I think Corum's been doing a lot of checks and stuff. Um, so he has uh, two passes in Hagler right now. So, uh, Corum, for you to put up your Hagler, you would have to succeed one more time, and you have to fail twice, and then it immediately goes up to four. So I need to do both, or just one of those? Both. You have to oh, okay. pass in. Yeah, you can't learn unless you fail a little bit. Um, same thing goes from like maximum nature and health and will, etc. And it immediately goes up. So you guys can check, uh, and just make me aware before you do it. Just say like, hey, beard, uh, I've got like my armor is two. I got two passes and one fail. Can I put it up now? If if you are not trained in something, but I allowed you to do it already, and I might have told you to put a success there or something, you're using something called beginner's luck. And what you do is, if you use a skill that you are not like trained in, you don't have a rank there yet. You have to pass, or you have to basically use the skill a number of times equal to your nature. So uh, again, just using Quorum as an example, his nature is five. If he uses Alchemist five times, pass or fail, doesn't matter, then he gains two, uh, level two in Alchemist, a rating of two. Okay. Oh, I see. So I thought okay. that my nature of six was a great advantage, but when it comes to learning new things, it... Uh... No, it means that you're stuck in your ways. It's pretty good. I like it. Uh, that's that's that fits okay. perfectly for Bartholomew. <laughs> so, uh, you guys run up this passageway. Uh, it begins to level out a little bit, and uh, sort of like panting and exhausted, uh, you guys make your way here. Uh, turns don't really pass during uh, conflict; it's like one round. However, uh, we are now at our third uh, check of the grind. So, is everybody hungry and thirsty again, or is anybody? I am. Okay. I'm hungry. Uh, so if you are hungry and thirsty already, you now also gain, in addition, exhausted. Oh. So all of you are hungry, thirsty, exhausted, 
uh, if if I'm not mistaken, Eklam is also injured, and Bartholomew yes. is afraid. Yes. Can I drink some Perfect. of my wine to remove that then, or? Uh, to remove what? Exhausted? I don't know. <laughs> you may. So, uh, because you're doing this, and it doesn't take a turn to, to drink, uh, you basically have two options here. Uh, so Bartholomew, as you per- pull the uh, cork out of your drink, um, your hand's shaking. Uh, I believe if, if you're going to recover these things, you uh, I think it says that you have to do it in order from most severe to less severe. Just one second. Um, again, I'm still also like, I mean, I read the manual twice, but there's some kind of like weird rules. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Where is the recovery rule? Make one recovery chest for you must relieve conditions in order. Okay, so yeah, you can immediately make uh, hungry go away. Additionally, uh, so you asked me about the ob three next to afraid. Uh, Bartholomew, you can right now, uh, and I don't think it takes a. Uh, actually, I do think it takes a turn. Um, you can sort of like try to gather your wits about you and make a will test to overcome. Uh, the fear, the ob is the DC, so you make a will check versus it. Now, uh, two two really quick things. First, um, your so a recovery test to try to make something like this go away, afraid or injured or whatever, does not get penalized by conditions. So being hungry and thirsty won't make being afraid any worse than it already is. Okay. Additionally, wine has an extra advantage attached to it, which is uh, instead of using wine to alleviate hunger, and I believe it is not is instead not in addition to, uh, it can help you overcome your fear if you prefer to do that. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think um, I think I will. Uh, yeah. So so it would, would it remove. So so just just to so yeah. Sorry, I, I gave a lot of information there really quickly to sort of uh, let you know. You can either make a recovery test right now, which will take a turn. Um, to try to overcome afraid, or with no action, no nothing, you can drink your wine and recover hungry and thirsty. I will, okay, but not exhausted? No. Okay, so I think, um, I think I'll try to, um, remove afraid. Okay. Uh, so afraid means you take a will test. You can get rid of your wine, and it adds you one resource to that. So you get an additional die roll to recover from uh, fear. Um, but you're still going to be hungry. Um, so you're going to roll your will uh, a plus one versus ob three. So you have to get minimum three successes. All right, so 66. One, two, three. I'm good. Four. More than enough. So uh, Bartholomew drinks deep from his wine skin, uh, and uh, Bart, afterwards, you feel your hands aren't shaking anymore. Oh, I feel so much better. And, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, sorry, I need to redo how I'm doing this because I kind of fucked up a little bit. Uh, so that does take a test. Uh, I think you have a lantern, though, so you're okay still. Um, you guys are in a hallway, but I'm going to say that um, uh, beyond, uh, you can see that uh, you can actually see this sort of warm orange light of flame coming from the chamber beyond, but you can't quite see what's there yet because the tunnel turns. If any of the rest of you would like to uh, make any kind of recovery tests, uh, I believe you can. I hope. Wait, I need to check afraid actually, because maybe you can only. Oh, actually, sorry. I apologize, Matt. I I was wrong. You can only recover afraid in camp. So you may oh. save your wine if you want when you camp. Yeah, I, I apologize. I fucked up. You you may uh, try that test. Uh, I'll I'll even let you keep that if you decide to do it. Okay. Um, but only when you guys camp. Uh, uh, alternatively, um, yeah, you can drink it now immediately and recover hungry and thirsty if you prefer. Um, 
I'll I, I guess I'll just keep my roll and use it when we camp. Okay, fine. Uh, all right. So what do you guys want to do? I'm going to tell you that because I'm sort of putting you in between hallways, I'm just going to let you guys know that this is not an appropriate place to camp. You have to be like in a room that is safe. Uh, before you um, I'll it. drink my water to recover hungry and thirsty. You may. You can do that right now. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Uh, can I eat in order to recover exhausted? Eat my trail ration? Uh, not for exhausted. Only hungry and thirsty. Okay, I'll do it for hungry and thirsty. Okay. Uh, I will let you know, because you are the cook halfling, uh, you can eat this now to recover hungry and thirsty. Alternatively, during camp, you can use the cook skill to make uh, rations uh, sort of stretch for the whole group. And it is only an option for people with the cook skill. Oh. Uh, all right, I'll save it. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, do you, ha it. do you have fresh rations or preserved rations? Preserved. Okay, so that's three meals worth. What about fresh what rations? What is cooked or what it's not cooked? What it's not cooked is three. Okay, I'm just going to eat one now then. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Anything else you guys want to do before you venture into the next chamber? I don't think so. I can't remove hungry. Oh, I totally forgot to show you guys what Annabelle looked like. Um, oh. Yeah, you can't do any like recovery checks yet. Mm -hmm. I think before we go into the next room, we should uh, see if someone's, someone's in there because there seems to be a campfire. So we shouldn't just could, uh... walk into the room. Perhaps the uh, perhaps the small one I can, sneak, can up uh, sneak up there. Ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't do handouts. I was gonna do handouts, but I'm worried that. in the darkness and go and take a look. Shit. Um. Okay. So, uh, would you? So you use scout both for like perception and stealthing, basically. Uh, are you guys okay with letting Eklum go? Yes. And what's your scout skill? Uh, it's two, but I have sneaking as one of my descriptions. Yeah, that sounds fine. So does that give me a bonus? Um, sorry, if it's part of your nature? Uh, yeah. Good question. Um, my gut says no, but allow me to check. Uh, I do apologize for the little bit of down. So... It does play in your descriptor, acting within your nature. Uh, yeah, no. You can only use nature when uh, you don't have the skill to do it. Because it's still something that you sort of like, is, is a stereotype, I guess you could say. Okay. No, I only get to roll 1d6 because I'm injured. That gives okay. you minus 1d6 uh, skills. Okay. All right. Pass. All right. Uh, and because you are sneaking, these other things are going to do a check opposed to you. Um, I guess I'll just do this. Wow, lucky you. Um, so you sneak into the chamber beyond. Uh, back from the Kobold Tunnels isn't very far, actually. You guys can sort of see. Uh, and Eklum, you sneak into a rather strange chamber. So the walls are still made of hewed stone, but they look like they've been sort of chipped away to be a lot more serviceable. Uh, this chamber is like a large square with uh, the, the two passageways, one to your left and one ahead of you branching out from here. Um, however, in this room, there are large stone tables everywhere, and the light that you saw is against the wall to your right, as you see several large ovens are in the wall, and there is a scent coming from them that is ridiculously delicious. It, it is amazing scent. Um, in this chamber, uh, you can see 
uh, uh, sort of like on top of all of these tables are butchered meat uh, here and there. Um, there are uh, stripped uh, meat of several uh, different um, origins. You're, you're not entirely sure a lot of them, but what's sort of horrific is that many of the hides are tanning along the wall, and you sort of look as you see like a massive rat that's bigger than you are, and, and next to that you can see that there's some kind of like woolly cow thing and then next to that as your stomach turns is a uh, f uh like flayed human like a skin that is made absolutely like perfectly flayed onto the wall uh with all this meat in the room and in the chamber uh is a large obese orc wearing a chef's hat uh walking around with uh two goblins uh with them and the orc is yelling out ingredients to them and he he walks over to an oven and pulls out a delicious pie and he says behind as he he walks behind several of the goblins like knocking them over uh sets it onto a table and the aroma coming from the pie is just amazing uh and and the orc sticks his finger into the top of it and licks it uh, and he his, his face is like completely impassive for a second and he looks down at one of the goblins to his side this sort of like green skinned oblong headed creature as it holds his hands together and uh the goblin says uh i i added more rat papa jorg and uh the, the orc <laughs> picks up the pie and slams it onto the ground that explodes and he says again and it, it echoes through the entire chamber <laughs> uh, they're, they're too they're too involved in what they're doing to notice you sneaking around is there a chance i can just grab like a big chunk of uncooked meat and just get out of there uh you can try yeah so um you you sneak up to one of the tables and i'm gonna say like you don't even really have a chance to examine it or anything you pull uh sort of like a chunk of meat off the table and slip back into the passageway um and uh the the orc uh marches over and picks up a massive uh rolling pin uh, and slams it onto uh some dough that he's making out of what appears to be bones uh and, and crushes out more uh pie crust um, as you head back to the rest of your companions uh, i'm gonna get back and say oh there's a big old green guy in there he's smacking around little guys but when we make camp i can cook this it'll be enough for all of us to eat oh perhaps perhaps i underestimated the use of your kind in places around here of course you'll share right i said enough for us to eat Good, good day. Let's, let's let's do this. I mean, it's fresh. I'm gonna say that it's like the equivalent of a fresh ration. You can't. Uh, you could eat it, but you're gonna risk getting sick. Um, well, right yeah, that's Otherwise, what I mean. Like when we camp, I'm gonna cook it up. Okay, sure. I will allow you to add f uh, fresh ration. This is acceptable. Um, I'm not supposed to give you treasure for doing almost nothing, but I'll I'll make a make an exception this time uh so fresh ration just takes one pack uh uh spot uh, she's she's gonna be carried all right <laughs> you're just carrying me in your hand. <laughs> and it's all i can quiet. carry it i have some space in my backpack i do i think i do have fresh rations i don't know if they stack though oh no they don't i just have one fresh ration uh uh Ration, uh, fresh ration should say two next to them. You have like two meals worth, but fresh. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll give Coram the fresh ration. Okay, I'll put it in my backpack. Okay. All right. So, how do you guys want to proceed? I was going to say uh, from this, make sure from this that's hallway, at the top. From this hallway that you're in, you can either go back into the kobold chamber or go forwards into this kitchen. So it's just those two ways, right? There's not a way. You guys aren't in a room. You're kind of in a hallway. Um, yeah, that's it. Hmm. Well, we probably shouldn't go that way, considering I just uh, stole from him. Oh, but the way back wasn't too great either. That is true. I don't want to fight these things again. Can we maybe just scare the orc away or something? An orc? He was pretty big. 
orcs aren't scared. Maybe we can just say we're passing through. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work, but uh, perhaps. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> we can't fight. We need to find a place that is safe. We already got some meat. Let's not get greedy. Well, we basically have to choose between going back to the kobolds or going forward to the orc. Uh, and we know that the kobolds are uh, not our friends, but maybe the orc will just let us go through. Uh, <laughs> that is uh, we can give it a, a shot. Stupid it's, plan. A, it's our only hope. Otherwise, we got to go all the way back past the kobolds. Yeah. And all the way down until we took a right instead of a left. Yeah, to 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 make sure people understand, Bartholomew will follow, but he's just like he's not thrilled. Absolutely. Um, Maybe we can we can give him Bartholomew in exchange for letting us do. <laughs> I knew it would come to Ooh, this. Oh, I like the way you think. You people cannot he, be trusted. Now that you mention it, he did have a human skin all stretched out. You might. So, you might be interested in the big guy. So are you, let's go. Let's are you go to the cobbles. In? Let's go to the cobbles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you sneaking in or walking in? I think. Uh, just... I think we should walk in if we're just going to yeah. be like asking for passage. Okay. Uh, so you you well, walk into chef, this. Right? We could just walk in and like act like we want to get something to eat, like go into a restaurant. So, uh, well, and uh, yeah, we, we can do this. So you guys, you guys walk into this, this thing sort of like hands up or what, what, are you just like walking in? I, I think I'm just hands, walking like, in and like wounds. smelling and. Okay. Uh, so just... when you do, uh, the, the goblins notice you first and like yeep and uh, duck under some of these like stone tables nearby. One of them like pops back up with a kitchen knife kind of nearby. Uh, and the orc uh, turns around uh, and you see his eyes sort of widen as you guys walk in and he says um, uh, uh, you've intruded into Papa George's kitchen and he picks up a massive rolling pin and begins to march towards you guys. Uh, so you're going to try to talk him down, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the plan. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to do the same sort of disposition thing, but you guys are talking to him this time. Uh, so from the top uh, to do <laughs> conflicts. Step one is to determine the type of conflict. You guys are trying to talk to him, um, which is fine. Uh, I guess we'll say it's convince. Uh, is it convince or trick that you guys want to do? We're just trying to convince him to let us through because we're going to be okay. the ones who make it to the top. Great. Okay. Uh, so step one is you choose a conflict captain. Uh, so for convince to determine your disposition, you're going to be using persuader uh, and your will. So uh -oh. who has the highest? Persuader. I have two in Persuader. I don't have but Persuader, but I have because... five will. Okay, Eklum. It's all you. I mean, you you have you only have one, but better than nothing. Uh, what is your will? Five. Five. So you can roll this, and it'll either be five or six disposition for this conflict. So I can roll five or six? Uh, no, no, no. You just roll one die. If you succeed, then your your health for this conflict is six. If you fail, it's only five. Okay. So fail. five. So you have five disposition, five hit points, I guess we can say they are, that you can split amongst your party equally. So, um... If I had, yeah, if, so two of you... If Bartholomew is the uh, one that only has one, it would make sense, because he's afraid and really scared right now. Do you want to do that? Do I was going to give you... I was just going to give him the one because I like him the least. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, everybody agrees. So, yeah, you guys add, add that to each of your things, please. You guys basically can, like, add a... Uh, oh, wait. 
Uh, can you guys add your own health bar? Do I have to do that? I think you can add your own health uh, bar. I added mine. Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah. So you should just uh, add some kind of health bar. Bart, you have one disposition, and uh, the other two of you have two. Um, the uh, Papa Jorg already has one set for him. Yes, his name is Papa Jorg. Uh, and um, to their disposition... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, if anyone on your team is hungry or thirsty, minus one disposition. Is everybody okay now or no? I'm no I'm longer okay. hungry or thirsty. Bart, I'm exhausted are you still, but I don't know if that makes a difference. I don't think so. It should say there. Bart, are you still hungry? Oh, or yeah. no. Okay, so you guys actually have one less disposition. Oh, no. One of you has to drop down to one as well because of Bart. Uh, Bart I'll can't drop down to one as well. Yeah, Bart can't start at zero, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it would okay. definitely... At, at least that's... So, <laughs> wounded and exhausted, you guys walk into Papa Jorg's kitchen. Uh, and Conflict Captain, Eklum, what are your three actions and the order you're going to do them in? Uh... I guess this round we're all just trying to, like, kind of convince them. We'll save running for a future grouping of actions. Uh, well, no. So th your your objective is to convince him, but I mean like attack, defend, feign, or maneuver. Remember, you're still doing the RPS style, but th just for talking. So attack would be, for example, I mean, you can make up whatever you want, but attack would be like, we're just going to be straightforward with him and be like, please, Papa Jorg, we're really hurt. Please help us. Defend could be more like, we mean you no harm. Uh, Fane would be like, mm, this is delicious. Uh, I love this kitchen so much. Uh, manu maneuver might be something more like something odder, maybe like complimenting him or something. So so basically just pick attack, defend, feign, or maneuver. You pick three actions. Again, it can be attack, 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 or defend, defend, attack, or whatever. You can just pick three uh, actions. Let's go with maneuver, defend, defend. Okay, and who are you going to give? Are you to? sure? I mean, we, we have to uh, get his hit points down, so we, we should probably also attack. So I'll just try to convince him to let us through, because I think we win if he doesn't have any left or that is correct, disposition. Yeah. I think it's but, called. But if right? we do other things, then maybe it's going to be easier to attack him later, right? Maybe. Ba basically, the way that it works is. Attack will sort of directly reduce his disposition. Uh, defend restores your disposition, uh, including if you are reduced to zero. Uh, Fane can harm him if he like defends or something. It's kind of the weirdest one. If, if he defends, you get a free shot at him. If he attacks, then you guys are put at a disadvantage. And maneuver only gives you guys bonuses or penalties. Um, or bonuses or gives him penalties, basically, if you're successful. Okay, I was. I mean, I was thinking uh, I would faint, but uh, you decide. You're the leader. Why don't we maneuver, attack, attack? Okay, and we'll Who's try that? and like. I'll start by complimenting him and saying like how big he is and how like we obviously don't want to fight him or we're just not going to pass. And then, so I think you're you should probably maneuver. more talk about his cooking skills because he seems more interested. I mean, well, yeah, we we can do that. Like, so, so Eklum, you're doing maneuver first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Bart and Corum are both doing attack. Yes. Who first, Bart or Corum? Uh, we'll let Corum go first, and then Bart. Cool. Okay. So action one, Eklum. Uh, you walk into the kitchen and you say, uh, "No, no, no, no! We were just drawn here by the smell of the lovely food. Uh, we're we're just trying to pass through. Do you mind?" Uh, so, for your maneuver, for convince, you're going to make a manipulator check. Do you have manipulator? I don't believe so. Let me double check. Okay. No. All right, so you're going to use beginner's luck. So add your will uh, and cut it in half. Uh, what's that? So two, I think. Two. Or you can use your nature at its full score, but you'll your nature will go down by one. Those are two options. 
I'll do the will. Okay. Uh, so that means you're rolling one die. And he yeah. is doing... Let's see what he gets. Uh, he is attacking. Uh, the equivalent of attacking. So, but, I mean, he's talking. He's not just like walking up to you guys and smashing you in the head. Um, but maneuver versus attack means that it is a versus roll. So he will roll opposed to you. Um, which is... Not quite... Oh, you got one success. That's not bad. His disposition is two. I just need to see. I'm not exactly clear on how... Monstrous roll for this shit, so just take me one second. I'm just describing the chapter. Yeah, and it says none, so I imagine it's just that. Okay, so uh, you... Um, uh, I guess I'll just do this for him. Okay, uh, so you walk in and say that uh, you were sort of drawn by this delicious smell. Uh, and he he points at the goblins and then points at you and says, better ingredients, better pie, Papa Jorgs. And the uh, goblins begin to make their way towards you. Uh, I'm going to say that you guys are at a stalemate. You can break in his favor with a trait if you want. It'll gain you two... Um, it'll gain you two checks. Uh, alternatively, you can just keep this stalemate and nobody loses disposition. Uh, Remember, checks help you recover at camp, but you know. if you're dead, you can't recover at camp. Yeah, can I use my calm trait? Uh, to your advantage or your disadvantage? Uh, to my disadvantage. Sure. Isn't well, how, do, how does that to go? How does that translate? Like, how are you gonna justify that? Well, which way is the way to help me recover at camp using it for or using it against using it against yourself okay so i'd say use it against and say since it's difficult for me to generate emotion i'm not really like getting as scared as i should be nice okay being told <laughs> i'm it. about to be made into pie no, no, absolutely <laughs> so yeah so i'm gonna say that you lose one disposition so you basically like take a hit as the goblins maneuver up to you as they see better ingredients um, in, in the form of a halfling. Uh, so your maneuver didn't work. So next we go to Corum. Uh, so uh, what exactly are you like saying to try to defuse this situation? Mm. Well, I think I just... Uh... I'll, uh, I don't know, that's not, that's not really attacking though. Like I could... I think I'll just tell him that um, I don't know. Should I threaten him? I could just tell him he, if he wants to keep cooking, he should just let us through. Let us through. Okay. Uh, so you make a uh, persuader. Yeah, I don't okay. have that. Okay. So again, uh, same thing. You can either roll your uh, full nature, or you can roll half of your will. I think I'll roll nature, because otherwise oh. I won't have a chance. Okay, so it will be reduced uh, by one afterwards. Not your maximum, but your your other score. Um, mm -hmm. Regardless, uh, you both chose attack. Uh, so, is independent, success are... Okay, so you guys both, like, air quotes, hurt each other, more or less. Um, so you may roll your nature then. He will do the same thing. So you get two successes, uh, and he gets one. So um, <clears throat> uh, this will be interesting. So basically what happens is, um, Coram, as you say this, uh, the goblins uh, sort of uh, march up towards you, and uh, they... Uh, they're they're sort of like looking you all over hungrily, and um, as as you begin to convince him, uh, the the orc sniffs the air for a second, 
uh, and says, um, uh, uh, wait, you, you have something, something I need, that special something. Give me the special spice. And, uh, the goblins seem to be waiting for you to give him something. A special spice. Um, what do I have in my inventory? Did he say it to me specifically or just to the group? No, to, to the group. Oh, okay. didn't, didn't I get a turn, though? Uh, no, it's actually over. That that reduces both his disposition and uh, Quorum's disposition to zero. Oh, okay. Uh, con yeah, convincing Poppy Jorg is not that difficult. Okay. So does anything special happen because my disposition is zero? It doesn't, doesn't uh, it sort of depends of on what, what you do right now. I'm going to make a decision okay. based on what you guys decide to do. Yeah. So basically so the way that it works is like if, if you win a fight without losing any disposition at all, uh, there, there's something called like the compromise system. And the compromise system is a little bit ambiguous, so I don't want to get too, too into it. But basically because you guys were like air quotes hurt, like you lost some disposition, there's going to be consequences to you guys winning, um, especially for you, Corum, because you lost. Uh, basically you, you KO'd yourself to take him out. Um, basically, you didn't actually KO yourself. There's just going to be a more severe penalty for you um, than everybody else. Bartholomew has basically just been standing here stunned, and luckily the situation diffuses itself before he gets the chance to do anything. Um, so, Coram, what, or what do any of you guys like offer Poppy Jork to spare your lives? Um... <laughs> well, does anyone have anything that might smell like a if you're looking for meat, I know that there's lots of kobolds down the next corridor. <laughs> uh, I have, like, my tinder box. Uh, the orc, as you're just sort of, like, digging through garbage, he, he slams his fist on the table and says, uh, The special spice! I smell it! Uh, I'm just going to pull my tinder box out and hold it up to him. <laughs> this was Legend of Zelda. It's like nothing happens. <laughs> it just, uh, I'm gonna say one of the goblins runs over and rips. Um, uh, I guess Corum. Uh, yeah, oh. uh, I'm gonna say that they motion towards your water skins, both Bartholomew and Corum's. Oh. Mine is empty though. Oh, did you drink your water already? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, your I rations didn't... then. Your rations, then. I still do have my wine, but I'm not giving it away. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving him uh, my ration. Okay. Uh, if you don't, Papa Jorg pulls out a Very massive weird. cleaver and marches towards you. Uh, like I said, there's... Uh, there's... Give him your wine. What are you doing? I can't... I am. Uh, I. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any. <laughs> is there an? Uh, is there another door in the room, other than the one that we came in through? Uh, you can see that there is. Uh, there is a. Uh, there's two doors in the room. Uh, there's one like behind where Papa Jorg is. There's one to your left as well. Um, they both look like iron doors, uh, and there's a hallway stretching out behind Papa Jorg as well. Um, either of them, if you guys decide to run, like the, the goblins and Papa Jorg have sort of taken positions around you guys to, to sort of like uh, be less transparent. You, you guys tied sort of in the disposition, like you beat him and convinced him, but there has to be some sort of consequence. If you decide you're just going to try to run away, I'm going, like there will be a consequence, but it might not be exactly what... You know, um, uh, hold out my you. preserved rations. Okay. Uh, have you eaten any yet, or no? You just have preserved I rations. I ate one, That's... so I have okay. two left. Uh, one of the goblins rips it out of your hand, uh, brings it to Papa Jorg, and Papa Jorg nods, and he says, "More." Don't you have, like, literally a piece of meat that you stole from him? <laughs> like, where is that? Yeah, but I'm not going to give it to him here, because yeah. then he'll know that we stole it from him. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I just pa uh, Papa like, George um, st steps forward and licks his lips, looking down at the dwarf and halfling. If you want to eat them, <laughs> can I do something to uh, be like you? Really didn't bring any food up, mate. No. Can I do something to uh, distract him while the others run away, or, or something to just make the escape for the others easier? Uh. Yes. I mean, I'm gonna say that you could try to do that to create a distraction, but uh, nigh both because uh, you were reduced to zero disposition and you're also making a distraction for them. There will be heavy consequences if you pursue this thing. I'm not gonna kill you, but. It's going to be bad. Um, you can do it, though, if you want. Well, uh, do the others want to escape? Because I, I would be willing to try it. Um, I mean, I do want to escape. Well, then, let's just do it. Okay, then. <laughs> let's just run Okay, away. what kind of distraction do you make? Um... Hmm. Do I have something? Hmm. Like, uh, how close am I to the ovens? Uh, you guys are a fair distance, but what what were you thinking? I don't know. I was just thinking maybe I could. Um. No, I don't even make. Yeah, maybe I could just. Is there like the a pie in the oven or something? Uh, yeah, there's pies roasting in there. Yeah. So I could just throw it in his face or something. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so Corum <laughs> suddenly breaks away from the group, toppling one of the goblins over, and Papa Jorg roars in fury and begins to march over to the dwarf. Uh, Bart and Eklum, what do you guys do? Uh, did he like? Yeah, I think I'll just yell at you. Uh, run! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess I'll start running. I was gonna say, did he like give us a sign that he's doing this? No, no, <laughs> he just yelled, "Run!" Where are you guys? Are you guys going left or forwards? Uh, I'm gonna say just straight line. Okay, Bart, you're following him. Yep, I'm running away. Normally, I would have tried to maybe grab something, but since I'm afraid, I think Bard's just like, no, 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 okay, no, Okay, no. so, yeah, so you guys run to the end of the hall. Uh, uh, Coram, you run up to one of the pies, and you grab it out of the oven, burning your hands, and you throw it at Papa Jorg, and he catches the pie in his hand and sets it down on the table gingerly. Oh, no. Um, uh, he then walks over to you and begins to pummel the shit out of you. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you are... Uh, I'm going to give you the injured condition. Uh, he mm. rips your cash off of yourself. He takes your coins. Um, and uh, um, he, uh, what would he do? Yeah, he, he pummels you, uh, leaving you injured. And uh, I'm also going to say that he grabs onto your backpack as you're running away uh, and he rips it open and your torches spill out onto the floor but then you manage on running away with everybody else you lose your cash and your torches okay um, you uh, then run into a very long hallway with the rest of your companions exhausted, wounded uh, all of you are pretty beaten up you run into this sort of long hallway as you can still hear Papa Jorg like screaming uh, uh, in in the chambers that you've left behind, um, but you manage on escaping. This is. Um, I'm also going to say that uh, your lantern is about to go out. Uh, I guess I'll relight it then if I need to. Okay. So I have one more. Uh, one... We should also probably find somewhere to rest. Yeah. ASAP. I guess we keep going. Uh, so this is like a very long hallway. You can try to rest here if you want, um, or you can press onward. Is there like an offshoot in this hallway uh, that we can kind of tuck into? 
Uh, it's pretty long. You'd have to explore it more to be able to tell. Uh, you can try to camp like basically where you guys are. Or just proceed if you want. I would like to get a little further away from Papa George before we. Yeah, it makes sense. I think. The night. Yeah, let's explore. Okay, uh, so you uh, head further down the uh, passageway, uh, and you travel for some distance, like. Uh, your exhaustion begins to set in. You guys are pretty wounded and disoriented and lost. Um, uh, but eventually, uh, the corridor that, that seems like, uh, also I, I should mention like the, the walls are made of still stone. Um, and it's not masonry per se, but it, it seems like it's a lot more well kept here. Uh, almost like somebody had been like, it's a lot more well traveled than the previous caverns that you had been in. Uh, suddenly where the hallway turns you can see that the wall appears to be breached uh and there's a passageway to your left where it looks like the, the tunnel that you've been following continues off into darkness and there's also a cave that looks like uh was formed from a collapsed wall uh, off to your right what do you do okay. should we poke our heads into each one and see if they're just kind of like Sorry, there is a, a going to a small room. There's a collapsed wall. So and... there's a cave to your right, or a hallway that continues to your left. Okay. Should we check the cave? I mean, you could rest in the cave if there's nothing dangerous in there. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, like, it let's, could be a... yes, let's let's take a look at that cave. Okay, so uh, you sort of uh, step into this cave network and you see that basically as soon as you guys head in there, uh, there's a bit of a drop. It's not very far, but uh, the, the cavern looks like it drops a little bit in this chamber. Um, you, you can see that there, uh, when, when you examine, you can hear water dripping and sort of like um, moving somewhere within the passageway. Um, not very far though. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a small sort of like cavern network in here. Uh, perhaps... Well, should we climb down, give it a look? Well, yes, yes, you go first. Okay, uh, remember you can do like a scout check if you want to... Uh, check yeah, I'll out. give that a go. House. Okay, so you uh, <clears throat> you head into the passageway and begin to examine it. Oh, uh, you have to bring a light source by yourself. Um, I'll give him my lantern for now. Yeah, I'll ask him for the lantern. There's and no you guys will just have two going. Stand in the darkness. Yeah, I'm also going to leave my grappling hook at the top so that the last person coming down can kind of like attach it to the rope and actually, anchor it to something. Actually, I'd probably come with him. I don't want to stay in the darkness. I don't know. Do we, do we really want to go down there? I thought we were trying to get further up. Yeah, but if we could just tuck down here to rest for the night. Yeah. Kind we could like also just rest bit. in the hallway. It's 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 more discreet over here. Uh, well, if you want to rest down there, then I'll just come with you. Okay. Uh, so you begin to look around in this passageway. You you allow um, uh, Bart. Are you still holding the lantern? Like who's holding it? I'll take it back. Yeah. Okay. So it provides enough light for everyone. So you're still good. Um, as uh, Ethereum begins to look around. Uh, Ethram, you do find the uh, pool of water nearby, uh, and when you move to investigate, you you can sort of um, see see the pool uh, undulating near one corner, and it, it looks like a kind of nice little cavern that you guys can hold up in. Um, you turn back to your companions to sort of let them know, and then you feel something uh, on your boot, and you look down, and the pool is like oozing around your foot oh, no. uh, and begins to pull you into it and you can see your boot begin to dissolve um, <laughs> um, as you, no. you've been grabbed I don't think we should drink that I'm not oh yeah you're shoes. not wearing boots so you, your uh, your feet begin to dissolve um, 
That's so much better. So uh, we're going to start right from the top. You are going to be attacked by a uh, thing. Uh, and we're, we're going to do conflict right from the top. And I'm just going to let you guys know. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to go like this, but the, the conflict straight up is just fighting. Like, you're not going to be... It's it's just like a jam, basically, that's attacking you guys. So um, you can choose a conflict captain now in this fight conflict. Now, the special thing about fight conflicts, and maybe I should just let you guys know. So in all other kind of conflicts, basically, the Torchbearer rules say that you should try to find, like, a different kind of compromise. It is only in fight conflicts that there is a risk of death. So if you guys lose, you die, basically. So here's our first, like life or death struggle um now if you get reduced to like zero disposition it doesn't mean that you're dead if all of you get reduced to zero disposition then you are dead um unless right, you guys well, decide to Matt, flee you haven't or... been uh sorry sorry yet so i should say it's it's not fight uh you have all oh, right because it's a special kind um Nature versus Scout, which you failed. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's a special kind of fight conflict because um, uh, Ethram is trapped. He can't leave. So Eglum. you guys have to stay and fight Eglum. Uh So, yeah, so um, this position for this fight uh, is a fighter skill. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> I have a three I have, in fighter. I have a two. I have a two, which would be a one. Oh yeah, it's gonna be so a one. Yeah, I'll. Yeah, also it's gonna be, be nice a to take one. one. You're also gonna be at one, Coram. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I. Uh, uh, injured oh. minus one D to nature, will, and health. So yeah, so that drops you to two. And then you're exhausted. Uh, factor in all tests except no. So just two is your fighter. So okay. you still have the highest of the rest of the group. So it's two plus your health. And you don't roll health. You just add these two dice to your health. So you can roll two. Yeah, I'll just. Yeah, you two failed. OK, uh, <laughs> so what is your health? We're about five. to die. <laughs> uh, so you split five as equally as you can between the group. Yeah, I think uh, Bart gets one and the other two get Fuck two. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, we know uh, who's expendable. I'm not expendable. <laughs> I'm the most valuable member. If you go back to Race the surface without Race me, four. they'll just throw you back down like the trash you are. Okay. You could have avoided the whole ogre thing if you would have just given up your food. Now I'm talking so, like you. What are you talking down. about? I don't have... Which is neat because you, you started to imitate his accent, and it's funny because you guys are both from the same district. So I was hoping you guys would pick up on that, but um, uh, that it makes sense. You guys probably you know, didn't know each other but lived in the same area. You from Boston? <laughs> um, so uh, I'm uh, khakis. <laughs> my khakis. <laughs> uh, so, Coram. No, I, I say khakis, like my pants. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you guys can decide your three actions and the order that you're taking them. And, Coram, you, you lock it in for everybody. I'm attacking. Yeah, do you have any ideas? Mm, well, this thing's pulling me in, so I'd like to try and pull out. <laughs> <laughs> it's always your Grow move. up, guys. Let's try and be mature. So, but what is that, though? Attack, defend, feign, maneuver. You guys can sort of talk amongst yourselves to decide. It would probably be a defend for you to... Uh, That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I'm thinking maybe attacking, but you make me do what you want. Yeah, maybe, uh, Eklum, you just defend to try to get out of it, and then uh, Bart and I just try to attack it. Sounds in that good. order. Uh, in what order, sorry? One more time. Um, Eklum uh, makes a defense, uh, defend action, and then uh, Bart does an attack, and then I will do an attack. <clears throat> Uh, so remember, uh, Eclum is or uh, defend is used to restore 
disposition. So because you guys aren't like hurt at all. Um, okay, so he can't go over that. Then maybe he'll do a. No, you can't go over the maximum. Now he could. He could like repel an attack that the creature makes against him. Um, because there just still is like maybe the RPS, can right? Do a maneuver to give us a bonus. Could also try that. Yeah, then he'll do a maneuver action. And then... Okay, and Eclum's going to be doing different roles than you guys because specifically he is trapped. Uh, so it looks like this. Is this acceptable? Eclum maneuver, Seems bard good. attack, quorum attack. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so number one, Eclum, what are you doing to like? maneuver this creature to sort of make it vulnerable for your companions. Luke. Luke? Yeah, since it's pulling on my foot, I guess I would just try and pull away as far as they can to maybe try and like stretch it. Sure. Uh, so you are going to uh, be making a health maneuver. Um, now remember, you can also use like different abilities that you have. You can also use your nature instead. Um, but remember, you'll sort of expend it. So you can either make a roll of three or a Does roll of... Does it replenish of... after oh. we rest? They're both the same. Uh, no. Well, uh, you can spend checks to restore it. Okay, I'll do my health. Uh, yeah, now that I'm looking at it, it doesn't look the same, so... Garbage. So I got one success. pass. Uh, I'm just gonna check the thing. We're trapped, so he rolls this. Uh, one success, so you guys tie. Oh, I didn't even fucking do this part. No, you don't need to. Uh, so attack what? versus maneuver. Uh, is a versus test. Um, so again, you may either, uh, I'm going to say like nothing happens, or uh, you can use a trait to like break something in his favor and uh, you'll get hurt, but you'll get checks. <laughs> <laughs> mm, checks mix. See, the only thing that I can really. Keep in mind if you die, you can't use checks. <laughs> just, just letting you know. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should just try to focus on surviving for this fight. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll probably just leave it. The only thing I can think of is just the same one as last time. I'm just calm and probably not as scared as I should be. But I'm just going to leave it even. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you try to pull yourself away from the slime, uh, but it, it fights back against you as you're trying to like hurriedly try to get away from this thing. Um, as it continues to reel you in, and uh, there's no progress. So Bart, you are attacking. I'm using... Can I use one of my flasks of oil to try to burn the fucking thing? Absolutely, you can. Uh, so, yeah, you... Uh, well, you're just pouring oil on it. Yeah. And, and then trying to light it on and fire. And using my tinderbox to be like, Die, you piece of shit. Okay. Um, and it's using maneuver. So attack versus maneuver is, again, the reverse of what we just did. Uh, so attack in a kill conflict, I believe, is... Fighter. Um, yes. Uh, so what is your fighter skill? Two. Um, and then uh, keep in mind your conditions. Does it oh. change at all or is it still two? Uh, let me check. What conditions do you have? I have uh, afraid, so that doesn't apply. I have uh, hungry, doesn't apply. I am exhausted. Factor in all tests. Okay, and that doesn't do anything. You're good. You're good. Cool. Um, all right, so... Uh, yeah, you can use fighter or nature. Oh, I can use nature? But but your nature goes down when you use it. That's basically the, the thing. Okay. Tax it. Uh, no, I'm going to, um, I'm going to just use, uh, my, my fight. Two successes, okay. my dude. All right, and it only gets to roll two dice, but we'll see if it ties you or not. It don't. Um, so yeah, so you, uh, you light this creature aflame, uh, and it, it seems to be repelled, uh, from, uh, Eklum a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really seem to like that very much. Uh, okay, and then we go to Quorum. 
and you are also attacking, but what are you doing thematically? Um, I think Ouch. I'll just, yeah, just axe him. Ah, uh, you're using your axe? I think so. Okay. Uh, so an axe, I believe it says, has no uh, bonuses or penalties uh, using this particular weapon. Um, but because it is, uh, well, uh, we'll do this in a second. So you can roll your fight skill or your nature skill. Okay. Um, I think I have, I have three fighter, but it's minus one for injured. So I'll just do fighter. Okay. One success. Uh, that's unfortunate because it gets an immediate two successes. Uh, so you, uh, <clears throat> uh, so you do one to it, and it does two to you. Uh, what does that reduce your Damage. disposition to? Uh, zero. Okay, so uh, you are knocked unconscious somehow. What happens to you? Um. I don't know. I mean, it's like a slime or something, right? Yeah. So I am. Uh, you. Uh, I'm gonna say you like step forward to this thing and you raise your axe over your head and slam your axe into it, and the creature seems to like spray apart. Um, and as as you uh, back up, you see that it is still gripping Eklum, but worse, uh, the slime that sort of like splattered on you begins to crawl into your armor and like into uh, sort of like into your body. Um, oh, actually, I forgot because you have leather armor, uh, so you can roll a d6. If you roll four, five, or six, you only take one damage. If you roll one, two, three, then you're KO'd. Oh, that's good. Oh, you're good. Uh, and you also have a shield, right? I do, yeah. Uh, so it says shield adds. Uh, plus two dice to defense, so you're good, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, so yeah, you only take one damage as you feel this thing like force its way onto your body and you can feel it burning your exposed skin. All right, we go back to the top. Um, you guys decide your three actions, the order you're taking them. Uh, I'm probably gonna start attacking this thing. Getting a little panicky. Seeing it start to crawl into Nye's armor. Okay. Yeah, let's just all attack it. All attack. Uh, Eklum, Bart, and Corum in that order. Yes. Oh, I'm the leader. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's just do yep. it. That way. Okay. Sweet. All right. So Eklum, you're up first, uh, and because you are trapped, you do something a little bit differently than everybody else. Your attack maneuver to try to escape is uh, rolled with your health again. Kidoki. So is it half my health or my health? Uh, half your health or your nature or your full nature, up to you. I'm gonna do my full nature. Okay, and then it'll go down by one, pass or fail, doesn't matter. Uh, and the slime is doing defend, uh, which is good. Two passes. Two passes. Uh, so that means your nature is at two now? Correct. OK. And attack versus defend means that, if I'm not mistaken, um, it is a versus test, which means that the slime rolls. Um, two. I guess one success. So yeah. So um, how are you trying to like escape from this thing? Uh, I'm gonna grab like a nearby rock on the ground and just kind of start like scraping my foot. It just starts smashing it. Okay, great. Yeah. So you're like splatting some of the slime away as it uh, slowly seeps up to your knee, uh, and you can feel it trying to like dissolve your body um as it does so uh 
Yeah, and I only got one, so yeah, you deal one damage, and then we go to Bart. Uh, same noise, so attack in a kill conflict is your fighter skill or your nature. And remember, oh. if you use nature, it is reduced. Yeah, so I'm gonna... If you don't have fighter, you use half of your health. By the way, since I used um, fighter already, do, does the and I succeeded, the, do I add a check mark on it, or...? Only, only once per fight, only once per fight. Okay, cool. So yep. I'll just, uh, so I'm going to roll again. I'm going to try to burn it again. Uh, maybe okay. increase the fire and I get sure. uh, two fails. Two fails and it cho shows a feign from attack, which means uh, it doesn't get to do anything. So you still, you're lucky. So you didn't hurt it at all, but feign means that it left itself vulnerable. It, uh... The, the slime like oozes away from you. It's trying to pull the halfling into a crevice nearby to, to devour it alone. Um, then we go to Corum. Corum, yeah, you are covered just... in... Yep. Hmm? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I think I'll just hit it again. Okay. I don't think there's anything uh... I can do about the slime on me. Or even if I can, it's probably not going to hurt the... Main okay. slime, so we'll just attack versus maneuver. Um, when I if I do a nature roll, do I still uh roll full nature or the reduced? You roll, one you roll full. Uh, basically, you can do fighter uh, at its its full amount. If you do nature, uh, you roll nature at your full, but it is reduced afterwards after you do it. Yeah, but because I already used it once, so I the. Oh. Max nature or the nature that I still oh, have? The, the expended nature is what you reduce. Um, not, not yeah, no, I know, but uh, like which, uh, which nature do I roll? Like the full nature or just the one that I still have left? I think the one that you just have left. Okay, no, then that doesn't make sense. And I'll just use fight fighter. Um, uh, here, uh, allow me to check quickly. I'll just make sure nature. Taxing nature, the current rating is reduced by the margin of failure. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I think it's the current amount, not the maximum. That might be wrong. Okay, no, then I'll just use fighter. Okay. One success. And for. Uh, maneuver, it gets two successes. Um, so attack versus maneuver means that uh, you reduce it by the margin of success, which is zero. Uh, and because it gets two, um, uh, the the you um, what exactly are you doing? You're like chopping it with your axe more. Uh, yeah, you, I'll, you, I think I'll you just cut it. Like kneel down next to it and uh, yeah chop into it again and again. Okay, uh, as you do so, it seems like each independent blob begins to move on its own, uh, and they begin to cover you and the halfling more um, as uh, each of them begins to, like, dissolve on you and uh, also begin to pull the halfling in more. So it's going to get a plus two bonus on its next roll, uh, which can be pretty brutal. Uh, so that was the three of you, so we go back to the top again. The slime is still fighting. Uh, so three actions decided by you guys and Which is the combat one that, captain that locks gives you in. an advantage? Maneuver. So I would like to do a maneuver this round. I think it would make sense for me to do a defend because I'm already down by one. So I can try to recover a bit. Okay. And also and I'm equal. kind of... Luke, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to keep attacking. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, it is uh, this. Do you want to do it that order or change it? No, the order is fine. The blob's next move is going to be at an advantage. When does the mm. blob go? It's the same time as you guys. It goes every single... Yeah, I think that's fine. Eklund still has the most disposition, I think. Yeah, okay. I haven't been hit yet. Yeah, All right. we'll just go uh, like this. 
So it's attack versus attack. You're both going to reduce yourselves by the margin of success. So Eklum, uh, what do you do? I'm just going to keep bashing it with the rock. Okay. <laughs> One. The caveman right. way. One. So I'm going to go nature because that'll give me two. All right. And you're being reduced to one. Yeah. Both fails. So it gets to roll two dice and gets an immediate one success. That's awesome. Uh oh. So you take two disposition damage. I am at zero. Uh, okay, so it pulls the halfling into the wall as he is knocked unconscious and begins to dissolve its meal. Um, so even though he is knocked out, if anybody takes the defend action, you can actually help him back up, no matter who does it. Um, so we then move to the next person who is Bart, who is doing a maneuver. Yeah, so the way that I see this maneuver is I will put my shield on the ground and I will attempt to any loose dirt that is in this cave. I'm trying to like pile it on top of my shield to make a big pile. And then next round, hopefully I can just dump it on, on the slime to make it like, I don't know, less consistent. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you're trying to give it traction or something? No, I'm just trying to make it less acidic. Trying to make by... it so thick that it can't. Yeah, cover it. I'm trying to cover it like in, in dirt so uh, okay. that it's, it's less All effective. Right. Uh, so maneuver here would be a, a health cool. <laughs> test. Health, I do have three, so I roll 3d6. Versus its feign which is two successes. Uh, one. So with a Fane, um, I believe it says that it's both at ob zero. So uh, you're going to take one uh, disposition but you're going to give plus two advantage to the next person who goes. So I believe that knocks you out, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. One. So you, you begin piling up uh, um, uh, uh, sand into your shield. Uh, and Oh, wait, you, you are using your shield, right? Yeah. Oh, but it's maneuver. It's not defend. Okay. Uh, actually, so roll a d6. If you roll a four, five, six, you are okay. If you roll a one, two, three, you are KO'd. Oh no! <laughs> so you you reach into a pile of dirt and you feel it move, and there's a slime on your hand that you then drop down as it begins to dissolve the ends of your fingers, um, <laughs> eating you very oh, slowly. Shit! <laughs> um, okay, but you give advantage to Corum, who's going now. Okay. So you are defending. Mm. Yeah, That's, I think it's, I'll... it's okay. Uh, how are you going to bring your friends and yourself into the fight? Mm. So you said that uh, he that the slime is, <laughs> this is bad. Him, like into the wall or something. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, I think I'll just like reach into the slime and try to pull him back. Just okay. Let's see what action mm. it takes. It's taking an attack against your defend, uh, okay. which means that it is a versus test. So, uh, because you have a, you do have a shield. Yeah. And you are given advantage. So what you're going to roll is, uh, you're rolling a health, a uh, plus four, two from the advantage that Bart gave you, two from your shield. And okay, and then. Minus one for injured, so that's eight. All right, that should be good. <laughs> two, two d6 plus an immediate one success, so it's minimum one. That's really not good. It got three. Um, four. No, five. Five. Not bad. So, uh, uh, you restore uh, so if these are verses you win by the margin of success so you can restore uh what did you get you have five successes five so yeah. you, can, you can give us yeah one so each. uh yeah so you have three uh well um yeah yeah he can't do that 
So you have three disposition you can spend on everybody. I think everybody's just missing one, if I'm not mistaken. No, I think Eclum's missing two. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so yeah, yeah so, so you, two. you can put yourself back up. To, okay, so here's your options. You can pick those two back up and you don't heal any, or you can heal yourself and Eclum and not Bart. Because uh, you have to heal people all the way before you can. Oh, okay. Experience. Yeah, then I'll just. Yeah. Uh, then I won't heal myself. I'll just heal the other two. Let's do. Okay. You guys go back to full. Uh, and we go back to the top. You guys still haven't defeated the slime yet. So pick three actions. This is fucking brutal. <laughs> all right, it's time to attack. <laughs> okay, Bart's saying attack. I'm going to attack as well. Attack and Gorum. Yeah, me too. All right, here we go. Eklum, you you sort of regain consciousness as as uh, um, Cor Corin pulls you out of this uh, Corin. This is Dragon Ball Z Corin. now. Um, Corum pulls you out of the uh, slime monster, and you're both going to attack each other. So because you are trapped in the blob, you are rolling health, I believe. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna go with my skill. Uh, you can't. Skill. Your oh, skill okay. has has to be health. Either way, it's one d six. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Fail. That's unfortunate. Oh, luckily, so did it. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Never. What the fuck? No, my not even a little fail. bit. Not even a little bit. So it knocks you unconscious again. Not great. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, Bart. Uh, you're, uh, yeah, Combat you're up. The okay. Uh, you know what? Instead of dying, how about I take the man option and just uh, sacrifice some of my nature? Okay. And it's using defend uh, against you instead. So, and I will roll. Uh, so, do I roll what, 66? Because my nature yeah, is. Yeah, that's your. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. All right, one, two, two. three. Mine show two failures. Okay, so you, you, how do you kill the blob? Well, you know that uh, big pile of uh, <laughs> of earth that I was preparing on my shield that I didn't manage to dump on the blob because I got attacked by acid. Well, now I take it and I just like cover it entirely in in earth, rendering it completely. Why do you do the lamest way that you could kill this thing? <laughs> Fuck you, it's cool as shit. <laughs> Dumping dirt on it. Take that, slime. Yeah, so I'll say that you uh, you dump some dirt on it and it, it dies, I guess. <laughs> so okay, you, fuck. Uh, you you, know, you <laughs> made it so no, no, lame. No, 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 no. No, you're right. It's cool. You dump dirt on the slime. It's awesome. <laughs> it dies. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Uh, so yeah, so the 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 slime has been neutralized dealt by, with by a yeah, great been... man. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, Cause... and uh, you are left in the chamber alone. So you guys have been thoroughly trounced uh, by this slime, and I'm actually going to give all of you the sick condition. Oh, that's uh, that's not too the, great. The scent the scent is brutal. Uh, your parts of your body have been dissolved. Um, you're all very weakened by this point. Youch, okay. Are you ready, ready to rest? Yeah, let's do that. Let's make camp. And I think after this camp segment, maybe could be a good place to end. But uh... That's sort of what I was thinking. Yeah, I didn't know if you guys could stick around much longer. Um, but yeah, this I didn't expect us to get locked down in that fight for so long. But, um, <laughs> you know, these things happen. They do. Uh, so yeah, um, do you guys just sit down and make camp? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. so uh, do you want to do anything to like prep, or you're just going to camp? Uh, how does like, that work? You can make, make, make food for us. I think that's that was a plan. Uh, making food you will do during camp, but that is a good suggestion. Again, I, I want you guys to just sort of experiment what do you think is there any skills you think you could use what what would you guys actually do to like make this place safe okay well i mean i have healer but i assume i using i use it during camp right yes yeah 
So no, you guys aren't going to do anything to. I don't have anything. I, have... I mean, I, we could do like a scout really... roll or to see if there's anything else in here. I, I have I have perception. ritualist. Can I? I would like to do that. Can I actually. make a ward of protection around this camp? <laughs> can I call? Uh, for, no. So for... what? What did the other guys say? So you don't have a spell. Just scout but... so that we can make sure there's nothing else in here right now. Uh, sure. That's not quite. I, I guess I'll just let you guys know. You can either make a um, survivalist to uh, secure this campsite, um, or you can sort of like say something else that you're going to do instead. Uh, scout is also acceptable if you want to. Well, I mean, you already did scout this place. Um, so, yeah. So, we know there's nothing else in here. Right. Okay, I can't really think of anything else. Okay. Um, Build a fire, like a bonfire. Okay, so you, um, <clears throat> you, uh, make a small fire, uh, you begin to rest. Um, and uh, you do find, however, that the water uh, that you saw previously, uh, there, there is some water in this chamber, but is covered in filth um, and isn't, like, th this room kind of reeks a little bit. Uh, you do notice that there are some skeletons nearby with some gear on it that you collect. Um, in this chamber are uh, this, three iron spikes, a helmet, two torches, and some copper coins. Cool. I'll grab the copper coins immediately. Oh, the <laughs> helmet. It is your instinct, so that is acceptable. Yeah, I would go for the helmet. Oh, that's true. That's Damn it. Thing. Well, yeah. And there's iron spikes and torches left. Uh, keep in mind, you hold torches in stacks of four, so if it overflows that, like if, if you have like five, then you'll have one stack of four torches and one uh, oh wait, I already have a helmet. I'll go for the iron spikes. I'll pick up the helmet. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so you the collect... torches will put my stack back to four if you want to do that. Okay. No, then you take the torches. Makes more sense. Uh, so quite literally, so how many checks do you guys all have together? Uh, so you're talking about mm -hmm. you used against for traits? Yes. I have two. So Bart has one. two. Three and then Eklum. Sorry, what were you asking? How many checks you have? Uh, where is that? I have one use against and one use for, so that's just one, right? That's just one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh uh, but you broke it um I think you used your trait against to break a tie, right? What did you use it against uh, for? So that actually gives you two points. So this is the okay, spread, so I think. Two, I feel like did you guys so? did more than that, but I guess I was wrong. Okay, so this is exactly how many actions you guys can take while you are in camp. Um, and you guys can split them however you want. So you have five things you can do. Now, I'm just going to let you guys know, uh, again, the game is pretty ambiguous as to what you guys can do. You can make one recovery check versus one uh, effect that you have, but only during this camp. So you can't, like... So, for example, if Matt uh, failed, for example, his check against Afraid, he wouldn't be able to just check against Afraid again. Uh, you can only do it once per camp. Um, so... Uh, Matt, I will even, I do remember previously you rolled, so I'll say that your one check is used getting rid of Afraid. Cool. Okay. Uh, so you have four left, and you can, like, give some to Bart if he needs to do anything. Uh, the one thing I will let you know is that uh, he needs at least one to make a map. And uh, at this point, I will explain how maps work. What a map does is at any point... Uh, sort of after you camp, or, or I think actually at any point, uh, Bart can make a cartography check. And if he succeeds, depending on where you go, you guys can immediately fast travel to one area that you've been in before. So for example, if you guys finish camping and you say like, you know what, let's go try to smooth things over with Jorg. Instead of 
um, walking there and expending resources and time and torches and stuff, you can say, okay, I'm going to use the map and go back. You make a cartography check, and if you pass, you just teleport there. Like, no torches, no food, no nothing. You just go there. And it, it doesn't... Well, if you guys wanted to go all the way back to the waterfall, you could do that. But you have to make a map first. So uh, I'll okay. definitely try to do that. I feel it's worth it. So 2D6. Well, somebody has to give you a check. So those two have two. So well, but it's... I do have another one, right? I don't think so. Did you have two? You told me you had one. No, I said two. No, I have one. He had two. Oh, my bad. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah, you have another one left. Uh, uh, so yeah, you don't have to make a... No, you don't have to make it now. You just have to say, I have a map and write it down somewhere. Okay, I have a uh, map. It doesn't take any inventory slot, but yeah, you can roll. Basically, when you say where you're going to go, then we'll do the cartography roll. Uh, okay, so you drink your wine, you cure your afraid, and then Bart draws a map. You have three checks left um, to either... So again, you can recover from conditions by making certain rolls. Uh, I think Bart is a cleric, so he can try to heal you of stuff instead. Yeah. Um, you guys could do something else, try to like fix equipment or scavenge the area for stuff yeah. or what is you know, get creative. I would like yeah. to get rid of my sick condition. Okay, how would you like to do that? You have two options. You can try to sweat it out, uh, which is kind of self-explanatory. You just will yourself to not be sick anymore. Or uh, you can give your check to Bart, who can try to heal cure it for you. What's your heal? It's Bart. two. Oh, uh, my will would be higher. No, it wouldn't. Because it would be half my will, right? Um, or would it be full will? I think it's your full will. Okay, then I'll try and uh, sweat it out. Is it? Hold on. One second, I should double check this. Conditions. Or can Bart help us with our checks? Um, Sick is pretty fucking bad now that I look at it. Yep. Recovering from sickness, an OB3 will test during the... Uh, uh, no, I don't... Th I think it is your full will. I do not think that it is halved. Alright, I'll do a will. You'll try to just sweat it out. Okay. I mean, do so, whatever you want. I'm t literally need, a trained cl cleric and healer of the circle, but... Um, you need... <laughs> three successes to to pass. I uh, you know what? I will even allow um, uh, uh, Bart to help. Um, sure. Because I don't see why he wouldn't. And I got bring. Well, success. good thing I rolled like garbage. So yeah, you can add that to a success for your heals, Bart. Uh, so yeah, so you only get two successes, which is not enough. Um, the two of you try to treat your illness, but it is not sufficient. So you have uh, one action left, respectively, or you can spend two or something. Uh, yeah, so think... how about... Yeah, Nai, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to try and heal my injury, because I'm injured and sick, and that's pretty bad. Can I help with healer? Sure, yeah. Oh, actually, maybe uh, I... Yeah. Oh, no, and can't. the last thing I'm going to say, because you do have one left, you guys do have to eat. Um, I guess the last check you will spend, j just to see if we can do it or not, will be either all of you eat a ration, or um, uh, Eklum can try to make a uh, cook check to make a ration, either fresh or um, a preserved ration for the entire group. Uh, but let's do this healing first. So... Um, Nai, what did you say you wanted to recover? Uh, injury. So that's okay. health. Uh, <laughs> right. So you're rolling five die. Uh, and you already yep. have one success. Actually, I don't get a success in healing. <laughs> Wop. I rolled uh, really well. And I just realized since I'm sick, I don't learn shit for that success in healing. Oh, that's right. That's why I'm trying to... Get rid of my sick and condition. You guys are all way too sick. Because I can't advance. 
<laughs> uh, maybe that's why, like, the healing failed because, like, Iklim is like, uh, so Bart is like, what are, what are your symptoms? And he begins to explain them, and then Bart is like, excuse me for a second. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> They're both completely fucked up. Okay, so with your last check, I, I guess Eklum has to try to make a meal for everybody. Um, or you, So he can either try to cook, and I'm not going to tell you what the op is, uh, but it'll depend on what ingredients you're using, or you can all just eat your own rations. Well, we have this uh, meat that we took from Mark, so he could just try to cook that for us. Yeah, I'll try and cook up everyone one ration. Okay. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm just looking over some of these factors. And you're using fresh stuff? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm just looking at your character here. Um, because you are exhausted, that puts it up by one. Well, thank you. Um, how hot is it out there? It's oh, so hot. hot. Okay. <laughs> uh, just, my wife just came back with lunch. Um, sorry, so going to cook means... Uh, you can roll your cook check, by the way. Fail. <laughs> okay, well, it's irrelevant what the op is then. Uh, so you waste those fresh rations, the fresh meal. Uh, you guys all have you to eat your You just see me rations. like cooking over a pot with like a bone sticking out of my ribs, and I'm just like throwing up <laughs> into the pot while I'm cooking. It. <laughs> and that's how we close tonight's session. <laughs> yeah, I think we're so, close to die. Uh, yeah. Welcome to Torchbearer. So I guess um, before we close this, then, and let's let's actually do this on air because we can we can sort of just clear it up. Um, we can continue next session with another live if Nye and uh, Luke are available. Maybe, uh, you know what? Maybe we'll discuss that off air. But uh, we might finish this. Otherwise, if you guys uh, are unavailable or we're, we're good, uh, we will just review it. Next session, if you guys are still available, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, again, I apologize for any slow parts. I'm also sort of getting yeah. used to it. And I tried to shoot from the hip in a lot of respects. So if there were some like minutia I forgot about, or like if somebody in the chat is like, Beard, totally fuck this rule up, I'm doing my best. I just wanted yeah. to still make it entertaining listening without, um, while trying to stay as close to the rules as possible. And so, yeah, so next week we will either play again if these guys are available or we will review it. Um, again, yeah. I want to thank you, Nye and Luke, for both helping us do this uh, and for joining yeah, us on no the worries. show. Yeah, and in yeah. the chat, if, uh, if you have a preference, either that we play more of this or that we just uh, skip on to doing the review, please do let us know. It's definitely going to weigh in at least a little bit in our decision. And, uh, yeah, I think... Um, I think that's well. I guess if you, if you again, uh, you know, just the usual stuff. If you like the show, please, uh, you know, subscribe, share it around if you think it uh, deserves so, and give us, leave us a thumbs up as well. That's a, an easy way to help us. And other than that, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll join us next week at the, about the same time. See you next week. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>